Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence. I truly can do nothing without you. You have become my Lord, my friend. There is no ministry without your presence. You are the secret. Always. You are the secret of freshness. You are the secret. to be the 21st century prophet wrote a book the pursuit of God's presence this generation does not know how to practice the presence of God we know how to pray we know how to fast we know how to stretch in tongues for hours and days but we do not know how to cultivate the art of his presence Holy Spirit Thou art welcome in my life. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Oh, me, potent Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you're truly welcome in my life. I'm worshiping him. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome. You are the fire in me. You are the power at work in me. You are 
are my present helper. Holy Spirit, I adore. You are that fire in me. You are the power at work in me. You are my ever-present helper. Holy Spirit, I adore. Nakane, Nakane. Nakane, Nakane, Girma, No Kaka, Ayabo, Nakane, 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 Nakane. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence. I have learned the value of your presence. I won't trade anything for your presence. I have learned the value of your presence. minute and say, Lord, cast me not away from your presence. Pray and say, Lord, may I not. Many of us have lost the experience of his presence. You're just operating power. I'm telling you. Your presence. This is part of the meeting. You can really get distracted and forget his presence. Your presence. I have learned the value of your presence. How can I? How can I lose your presence? What for? Make sure you are praying. This is part of the meeting. Hallelujah. The presence of God, the glory of God, can make a man, it can affect even your physical body. The glory of God, your physical body, it can keep you young, fresh. This is not about money. It's not about prosperity. It's the glory of God. The glory of God can alter you. It can bring you into an atmosphere. This is not just power you invoke and prime. No, no. It's an atmosphere. You live there. You dwell there. You speak from there. You judge things from there. Moses said, show me your glory. God said, no man will see my glory and live. He said, however, I will let my goodness pass by you. And he covered Moses' eyes. And the Bible says he stepped and Moses saw eternity pass. I'm very disturbed at how easily people can give up God's presence.
to take something that can be found when his presence is treasured. What are you looking for? Fame, money, power, charisma, ministry, anointing, intelligence. You see, I'm telling you, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we've lost the art of God's presence. That you are praying. Prayer is not the same as the presence of God. Many people think that you are praying in tongues. Have you not seen people who pray week after week every day? But there are certain people when they step in, it's an atmosphere. It's an atmosphere. In the glory I will stand. Help me with the symbol, please. I will stand and I will lift my hand in your glory I will receive every miracle you have for me in your glory I will stand I will stand and I will lift my hands in your glory I will receive every miracle you have for me I love your presence I truly love your presence more than gold more than silver oh I love your presence I love your presence I have learned the value of your presence Better than power. Better than anointing. I'm telling you. Better than fame. Nothing can be compared to the presence of the Lord Jesus. See, without the presence of God, you don't have a message, you don't have a ministry, you don't have an assignment. Learn this. Everything you will ever be and do will only have value because there is a presence that backs you. Stop chasing after what his presence can give you. I have learned by experience. Moses said, Lord, do not send us from here. Yes, let the people say we are marking time, but don't send us. If your presence will not go with us he understood the value many of us have not been trained the, the presence of God is not goosebumps the presence of God is not some ecstatic feeling and the Lord walking with them not answering their prayers walking with them and the Lord making his habitation. Father, teach us your presence and help us to value your presence. In the name of Jesus, please be seated. Hallelujah. many of you truly love the Lord with your life? Let me see your hands. You truly love the Lord. Some of you love the Lord, but you don't truly love him. You love him. 
but not years ago the Lord asked me and said can you die for me I said no I can face persecution for you I can go through several things but to die for you no way no way I'm not sure I've gotten to that point and it did something to my heart I don't know what he did I cannot explain but I know I love him Lord I give you my heart I give you my soul I truly live for you alone every breath that I take every moment I'm away have your way in me Lord I give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you every breath that I take Would you have your way tonight? Have your way in me. Hallelujah. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way in me. Take your place. In my life, have your way, Lord. I want to be under so much influence of the Holy Ghost. I want Him to possess every fiber of my being, just like a demon spirit possesses a man and begins to demonstrate his character through that man. I want to be so full of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, and Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost to an extent that his face began to glow as though it were that of an angel. There is such a realm, there is such a realm where a man can become like a God upon the earth. Not by usurping authority over people, climbing a mountain in the spirit, the Bible talks of men who this earth was not worthy to receive. They contended for certain things that were higher in the spirit. Always examine yourself to find out whether you are losing his presence. Don't use miracles as a sign that the presence of God is still with you. The psalmist said, cast me not away. That means a man can be casted from his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. It's good to have everyone around. We bless God for last week. Hallelujah. Celebrate God's servant, Pastor Williams. That was a powerful word. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. It was a great time last week. I missed the house. I know some of you didn't miss me. You were very happy. I have good news for you. I'm back. Praise God. I'm back alive, strong. God kept me for your sake. You shout it more than ever until you change. Hallelujah. If you don't love God, you will not love me. James 1, verse 22. James 1. Please make sure you are writing. These are some of the few things you do that makes you know whether you are growing or you are not growing. 
If you've been coming here for a long time, if you're coming for the first time, it's okay. Or if you're not yet born again. But if you've been coming for a long time and you don't have a, a good notebook or notepad or jotter or something, or at least your phone, your notepad on your phone, that you can write out teachings, it tells me how much you value God. It's amazing how people give God so little of their life and time yet they demand so much from him. Hallelujah. We give God a fraction, just a fraction of our attention, our lives, and then we sit back and wonder, Lord, why is my life not like so-so-so person's own? And God is saying, this person has given me all. Hallelujah. For as long as there was no more vessel, the oil stopped flowing. So make sure you write, pay attention to the things that are taught. It will build you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. James 1, 22. Did you hug one another? While seated, just turn to your neighbor and hug the person left or right. We didn't do that. We believe in love. Do it. Don't look at me. Some of you are frowning as if it's a curse. Hug one another. At least this is what we do now in, in lieu of holy kiss. <laughs> Hallelujah. One day, I remember some years ago, I was in a relationship seminar and they asked me, they said, is there holy kiss in the church of God? Ah. I told them I want to be your friend. Don't ask me those questions. No. Hallelujah. At least I know that you can kiss a very small lady and a very old woman. <laughs> if you truly love the person, you can kiss a very small lady like my sweetheart. Yeah? She always receives a kiss from me. And then very old. If you really love that old woman with agape, you should have no problem kissing the old woman and say, Mommy, nah. How did we get here? <laughs> James 1. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way. And immediately forget what manner of man he was. Can you imagine? But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth in it. Take note. He looks into the perfect law of liberty and he continues in it. He said, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. What's the reward? This kind of man shall be blessed in his deed. Hallelujah. Now, there are lots of believers who, as they begin to walk with God, they start saying, Lord, why am I not receiving results in my life? Why is brother so-so-so or sister so-so-so receiving results? And I've been born again for a long time. I come to church, I pray, and I fast. Hallelujah. But then, I'm not seeing... The manifestation of God's word in my life. I'm not seeing evidences that show that I am truly walking with the word. And that the word is working in my life. Hallelujah. And several times people send me text messages and say I love God. I have done everything I know how to do. I mean this thing is either the word is not working. I can't explain it. I've done everything I know how to do. I've prayed. I've fasted. You know, I read scripture, I even bought books. And I'm even doubting now whether this thing works or not. Hallelujah. Tonight I trust that God will help us examine that truth and then we'll pray. The Bible says, James 1 verse 22. Anyone with Amplified? James 1 22.
I'm seeing a woman outside. You are holding a child. You came with a baby. I think you wore traditionals. Please, can I have that woman outside? You came with a baby. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. You came with a baby. Please, when you find that person, let her come. See a woman with a baby. Let's continue. James 1, 22. Amplified. Who is there? Can you help her with a mic, please? I like the rendition. I'm still seeing the woman, a woman with a baby, child, small child. Not really a newborn baby like a few months. I think it may be maybe some years, a year or so. Yes. But be doers of the word. Obey the message. Listen. But be doers of the word. Obey the message, okay? And not merely listeners to it. And not merely listeners to it, okay? Betraying yourselves. Betraying yourselves. Into deception. Into deception. By reasoning contrary to the truth. By reasoning contrary to the truth. It says, obeying the message. See, a lot of people wonder why they don't see results in their lives. And they love God. They come to church. They are sincere people. Hallelujah. But over a long period of time, nothing, nothing at all seems to work in their lives. They have scriptures in their mind. They can quote scriptures. And then they wonder why these things are not working. And the Bible begins to give us an insight into what may be the possible cause. It says what? Be ye doers. Say after me, doers. Practitioners of the word. He said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. That means in a crowd like this, there are people who can be hearers. Oh, glory. I'm hearing this word. I believe it. I take it. I receive it. Hallelujah. The Bible calls them hearers. But then it is possible that as the word of God is coming, you are hearing, but there is no willingness in you to practice the principles and live by the word. It says, do not be hearers only, deceiving yourselves. In other words, the, Bob, the Bible calls it self-deceit. Hallelujah. You are listening to the word just like everyone. You can quote the scripture just like everyone. You know the songs. You know all the religious cliches. But the Bible says that they are not practitioners of the word. They don't live by it. They are not committed to walking in the truth at all cost of the word. And the Bible calls that, if you are a victim of that, the Bible says you have been deceiving yourself. So it is possible for a man to deceive himself. And there are many Christians, many pastors, many members, many great men and women of God who are living in deceit, deceiving themselves. They love God, but they are not practitioners of God's word. Can I tell you something? The performance of the word is for doers. Faith is not just hearing what God has said. Faith is doing what God says. Without an action, without a doing, there is no faith. I'm telling you, many believers, born again, tongue-talking believers, are not practitioners of kingdom principles. They know it. And, and you see, look up, please, look up. The most dangerous thing that can happen to any man is for you to know certain truths and not practice it. Because anytime you hear someone teaching it, there is that hardness you already know. Hallelujah. You already know. But it's not working in your life. It's not producing results. That means something is wrong. He said meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. 
and it leaves you with a promise. It says, so that thy profiting will appear unto all. So could it be that we have many believers who hear the word, MP3s all the time in their ears, and not many are committed to the practice of God's word. You truly do not believe the word if you don't practice. Any part of scripture you have not been practicing is the part you don't believe. No matter how you try to convince yourself. According to God's principles, you have believed a thing truly if you are living by it. So you see that we have many Christians but few believers. Not many people truly believe the word. Hallelujah. Look up. For those that are students, when ABU brought out your timetable, did you believe that timetable? How did you prove that you believed it? When your lecture was 8 o'clock, were you sleeping? You got up and went to class believing. You didn't see the person who pasted the timetable, correct? But you were so convinced. If you just lay down there and say, ah, my timetable is out. When they brought out your exam timetable, how did you prove you believed it? People jam packed the library. That's faith in the administration so many people now say i love the lord lord i love you the urgency in your spirit during exams tells you how much you trust that those people will not change that timetable and that you had better be serious are you listening to me but when it comes to practicing god's word there is no urgency there is complacency and people just hope that maybe it will work it tells on the way we respond and live by the word of God. So we have people tithing today, not tithing tomorrow. We have people loving today, not loving tomorrow. We have people studying the word and not studying. And then you ask people why. And they tell you, look, if you really know what is happening in my life now, you even thank God that I'm still born again. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you expect people to sympathize with you. And you say, look, see, just forget to, it's just God that is helping me right now. <laughs> Can I tell you something, friends? Listen, if you bend from living by God's principles, it will not be an excuse for God to just see your tears and bring blessings into your life. You will suffer ruthlessly for it. If everyone else is practicing what is not of God, and you say, Tor, will I stand alone? You will suffer. Are you listening to me? If you claim God's word is not working and you leave it, then what else are you practicing? Hallelujah. Many believers truly do not live by the word of God. The Bible says, be ye doers. This looks very simple. Very, very simple. But this is the reason why so many people will never walk in certain realms of the reality of the kingdom life. Because we truly do not live by the word. Deceiving yourselves. Hallelujah. Many believers, many hearers, we have all kinds of tapes, different bookstores. Oh God, Jordan is here. His bookstore is full of tapes and books. There are many of us who buy books and buy tapes every week. When they go to your room, they see series of different men of God. Different series. Hallelujah. Say, have you read this book? You say, yes, Abba, chapter 1 talks about this, chapter 1. And then you see the person is chorusing the solution for his predicament, yet not changed by it. Hallelujah. Have you seen such kind of people? They can tell you when they are counseling somebody, you, you hear them speak. Ask them. You can attach someone who just got born again to them and they will train the person and you become a wonder in the spirit but they themselves will never rise beyond that level. But they understand the spiritual principles. You can send them on evangelism. They will bring back souls. They can do great motions but to live and get personal success in their lives 
as a result of the word of God, they will never do it. That's why Paul said, let it not be that after I have preached, I myself will be a castaway. That means it is possible. There are many men of God who are victims of the things they teach. They stand on stage and attack immorality as if they don't know who a lady is. But you search their lives and see. Every hotel already knows them. Doers of the word. There are many preachers who teach on tithing and giving. They themselves don't give. The reason why they are still rich is because people are sowing into their lives. So they don't know the difference. They don't live by the word of God. Many people say, okay, speak the word and pray. But the leaders themselves don't pray. Hallelujah. You go to a man of God's house, you see him cross his leg and he's watching football match. He gives you the timetable. See, have you not known that the Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with civilian affairs? You see why certain people do not have personal success in their lives? Because the truth is, they have not come to a point where they love God genuinely. And are willing to live by his principles. There are men of God who declare fasting and prayer. And while the people are fasting, they are eating stockfish. Nobody knows. You just see them come. You see, we can fake every kind of thing on stage. But can I tell you something? Just as light and darkness cannot be mistaken, one day it will show whether you are standing in God's word or not. Hallelujah. Every time I pick up my Bible, I tell the Lord, am I studying simply because of the responsibility of ministry? Is it because I must prepare a message for God's people? Or is it because people will come for counseling? Hallelujah. Then you see people come and they stand to cast out devils and embarrass themselves. Yeah, that's where the robber will hit the road. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. And they go back with untold predicaments as a result of daring hell with a hypocritical spirit. It's easy to stand before people. I take authority over this devil. And then the man cannot sleep in the night in his house. He will call somebody and say, can you just come and stroll around? Because even him, he's not convinced that the name of Jesus works. It just so happened that he was used and the demon left. I'll never forget in secondary school when we prayed for one interesting boy that used to sleep on top of my bunk. And the devils came out. Oh, you, 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 come, you need to come and see us. When evening came. Bible says, and when evening came. That was when Jesus was healing. But when evening came for us, that was when it became a serious concern. People started singing praise and worship, strolling out of their rooms, moving to the, and they took light. I didn't sleep there. You watch people teach about certain kingdom principles and when you see them you say my god look at the, the unwavering audacity but then they don't believe it someone teaches on tithing and says i assure you if you don't tithe you will do this this person ask him in all sincerity you see we are not in the old testament otherwise many men of god would have been humbled by now many of us i'm not just saying them you know now God's grace is everybody can do everything. Whether you are tithing or not, who will know? It's just you and God. But can I tell you something? A day will come, the fruit of the tree will show. Are you listening to me? Many believers, many of us don't pray. You don't pray. The only time you really have to pray is when you come for koinonia. So when you are praying, you just feel that spirit you felt last week. Ba, 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 ba. And you are feeling guilty as you are praying. You know that you have neglected your secret place. Some of us rub our Bibles on our bed. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus Christ. I declare safe journey to Koinonia. And then you are leaving. It's not a priority. It's not a priority. It will only happen if they say, all right, in uh, maybe... Uh, protocol or worship or any department, you are the one who will lead prayers. 
And then you fast and pray and believe that all heavens are open. Only just to perform that religious ritual and then you leave. But can I tell you something? You can deceive man, but in the realm of the spirit, there is no deceit. A lot of people say you cannot deceive God. You cannot even deceive demons. You see, because in the realm of the spirit, everything lays bare. I hope you know that. You can deceive men in this realm. But I tell you the truth, in the realm of the spirit, everything lays bare. Ask the sons of Sceva. Paul was doing certain things and one day, the Bible says, they gathered, come sir. They carried somebody, sons of Sceva, plenty of them. And they came and they quietly locked the door. They said, we adjure you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. Is that not the real Jesus? And the demon says, today is today. You will know that we have been watching you. He said, Jesus, I know. In other words, I see them in the secret. We know that they are living by the principles of God's word. And so we can attest. See, if you don't, if you don't run away from God in the secret, he will not disappoint you in the open. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. He said, but who are you? He said, since you want to pretend, it's time for the whole community to know that this anointing is fake. And the Bible says, that spirit beat all of them, one, stripped off their clothes, two, and drove them out for the whole city to see. So imagine the men of God in that city naked. What happened? Not accident, not bomb blast, no nothing. You say a victim of uh, <laughs> you just imagine miracle service. And then just imagine all of us running, me and Bishop stand. I say, let's stand in unity. What happened? Oh, but that's what happened. That's what the Bible says happened. Do you, do you think those guys will be the same? They will first run away from that environment. I'm going to say, what minute these things? I thought it was so easy. When you see a man who is living by the word, doing some things, you think it's so easy and cheap. And then you come with the absence of God's presence and you try to do the same thing and you receive a root shock in your life. Be ye doers. Be ye doers. Are you a doer of the word? Are you truly practicing the principles that you know? Or do you just say, oh, I know, I know, at least I, I know, God knows. Are you a practitioner of the word? Hallelujah. There are many men of God who teach about giving. They are as stingy as anything. They don't give anybody anything. Anything. If ever they give, it's from what they gave them. You don't need faith to do that one. It came as a gift. And then you give it. Hallelujah. This is very important. Are you a practitioner of God's word? We teach on character. We teach on the anointing. We teach on certain principles. There have been so many messages that have come from this ground. I told you that some years ago, God asked me to do something. That's a customized dealing between me and the Holy Spirit. For one week, I was reading, chewing, devouring any book and any tape I find. Whether it's relevant to me or not, I just wanted to grow. Studying the Bible. Reading chapters upon chapters, books upon books in a day. And then one time the Lord told me for the next one week, I shouldn't open my Bible. I went back to those notebooks that I had been jotting. And the Lord told me if I were practicing up to 10% of the things that were there, my life would have changed. And I was ashamed of myself because I know God cannot lie. Many of you are holding the solutions to your life and destiny. In these books that you keep bringing week after week. You do not respect what you wrote with your own hands. You cried on the day you were writing it. Somebody even gave you a handkerchief and you clean and you quickly wrote it. But you are not living by it. You cried that day as if you will live. They say make commitments and before they said anything you were the first to go down on your knees. But after that. You see that's why honestly, honestly, I'm not carried away 
when people just kneel down or lie down or roll. I'm not saying don't do that. But there's too much emotion in the church. Too much emotion. And we men of God are consoled whenever there are emotions because we feel, ah, the people are really getting it. The power of God is flowing. Not necessarily so. If I sing a very nice song now, whether the name of Jesus is there or not, some of you will start crying. You are just emotional. He will just remind you of maybe one, your children's choir song, something, and you just start crying. It doesn't mean you are being changed. It's just simple memory of the past. Very few believers. See, every time I pray to God, I lie down and I say, Lord, help me. I cannot boast that I'm practicing every single part of the word, but help me. This must be your attitude. It's not just the truth you know. It's not just what you've had. What are you doing about it? There are many of you that gave koinonia messages to your friends and your family members. Powerful messages that can get them out of their predicaments. They collected it, put it in their laptops. They've not listened to it. Some of you have all the koinonia messages, including last week's one. How many have you listened to? There are people who are always collecting messages. Collecting everything. Do you have this? Abba, Jerry Savelle, I have this. You see sections. And there's nothing that is being changed in their lives. Nothing. Not their character. Not any result. The reason, hear me, very simple but profound, is that many of us are listeners, but we are not practitioners. Hallelujah. I remember somewhere in just they were doing orientation for Jerusalem pilgrims. Those who were going to go to Jerusalem. And you know they have some time of just encouragement and for some Bible studies. After teaching them about the significance of visiting the Holy Land and the impact it should create. They were giving them warnings and they said no drinking. And one old man was just looking at them while they were talking. He didn't say anything. He was just looking at them. And later when it was time for people to comment, just say anything, A-O-B, the guy said, well, this is my own issue. I won't go and buy beer in the Holy Land, but if I see it, I won't let it spoil. You see that? Now, do you think that person will ever walk in the fullness of what God has destined? No. That's how some of us are. I won't buy cigarette, for instance. But if someone offers me, even God knows. I won't go and look for any lady. But whoever makes a mistake of coming to my house, even God knows that it's not with my leg I used and went. See, um, it's amazing how people make these confessions and they, they are happy. People smile and then they feel very fulfilled. Let me tell you something. If you are not a practitioner of the word, you will be frustrated twice. Let me tell you the first frustration. The first frustration is because you have endured too much. Secondly, only to find out that your endurance is in vain because you were deceiving yourself. You see that? So, someone who was not practicing the principles of God, who had been looking at you and been prophesying your doom, in the future it will truly happen because you have been deceiving yourself. The Bible says, be ye he says, do not just be hearers, but doers. Be doers, not just hearers, deceiving yourself. How many of us here have been deceiving ourselves? Tonight, God is really examining us. How many of us? There are, may, there are very few of us that truly put the teachings we receive to work. That's why there are very few people that have results. But God wants everyone to walk in the manifestation of the word of God in your life. That with time, something should begin to show. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For instance, there may be some of us that still have all kinds of godless and useless musics, videos, and different things in our phones. You are born again. Hallelujah. And all those pornographic jargons are still on your phone thanks to Blackberry you can ping your destiny left and right from one person to the other receive things you should not receive 
and then Facebook again. These things are nice if you use them well. Twitter, we have all kinds of media um, outlets that help people not to live by the principles of the word. So you have a man of God who loves God. He's preaching the gospel, but still has in one secret place in his folder, passworded all kinds of pornographic jargons. And the problem is, they will never admit they need help. You see the point? It's a different thing if you are struggling with a challenge and you admit and say, Lord, somebody help me. But where people just laugh, and then they come out and do all kinds of things. And then you sit down and they wonder why God is not bringing members to their church. God is not bringing increase. They wonder why. And then they begin to criticize others that have this result. They say, forget about them, Jared. They must be putting their hands somewhere. Let me tell you something. Hear me and hear me very well. The Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Men may not know, but God knows those who are his. Hallelujah. Practitioners of the word. I listened to a message by Johnson Suleiman, a minister's conference that broke me in a very serious way. We'll be playing it for our, our Bible students. Very powerful. And this guy began to speak about, not, I'm not saying this to criticize. Many men of God, bishops, popular people you know in this country who deal on drugs. That's how they make their money. Millionaire clubs of pastors, apostles, prophets, bishops. Hallelujah. Currently, it was told that in NDLEA, drug law, there are about 230 something pastors that are under police custody for drugs. Some of them are your pastors. Who is deceiving who? Hallelujah. John Suleiman said he went to South Africa. When he went to South Africa, they asked him, they said, Kai, it's very cold, though. Do you need a warmer? The guy said, no, the AC is okay. We can adjust. He said, no, we, are not. we need a warmer. He said, what do you mean a warmer? He said, a lady now, after the burden of standing to minister. Bible says, and when Abraham's wife died, they brought a lady called Keturah. So to have somebody who will come and comfort you. And he looked at the man and said, what is all this? He said, the pastors in Nigeria do it. He showed some permanent ladies that belong to many of the men of God you see and celebrate. They caught a bishop at customs office with his bishop this thing. You know their shoes are customized. They opened the shoe and saw kilograms of cocaine. And in the bishop's staff, kilograms of cocaine. Are you listening to me? And a pastor who was called 100 Bibles, 100 Bibles, in each of them, there were wraps of cocaine. Nigerians. People who stand and lift up their hands and wonder why God honors some people and turns away from some people. Tonight is a message to re-examine ourselves. Are you interested in practicing God's word at all costs? Johnson Suleiman said he was on his way going with his books and they stopped him. He said they stopped him. And they said, please, we know you are a great man, but we will probe you. When they finished, the customs officer called him and said, are you embarrassed? I'm sorry. But right now, the situation with Nigerian pastors requires that we check a lot of things. You find out how many preachers have married abroad and have wives and children that nobody knows. Whenever the woman says, I will shout, or just get more money from building project or whatever, and just try and say, You said, keep quiet. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Are you a practitioner of God's word? Hallelujah. He said he was in a hotel and a lady came, just knocked and said, You have a parcel from the receptionist. As soon as he opened the door, that was how she just stripped herself. He said he was almost tempted to sleep with her. This is a sincere man of God. Because we live 
in a world full of men of God who exalt themselves and try to pretend all kinds of garbages while they are dying in the secret. The Bible says, he who conceals his sin shall not be delivered, cannot prosper. Hallelujah. He said he didn't know when he turned and started shouting in tongues. That was the only help he could get. Shut up! And the lady just closed the door. <laughs> Who know? Who know? He would have slept with her quietly. And his protocol will receive him in Nigeria. The great man. Whereas you have no identity in the realm of the spirit. Don't be surprised when they tell you there are pastors going to hell. Hallelujah. He said, call. How much of the word of God do you believe and are living? He said one of his sons in the ministry, he went to preach for him in Lagos. Within one year, when he started, when he saw the crowd, as a spiritual man, he said he called him after the meeting and the son gave him a brand new, Bible students, don't worry, you watch the video. It's a minister's conference, won't give people around, but we will watch it. Hallelujah. Gave him a brand new car to a jeep. Most men of God, are you not surprised that with the evil happening, most of the people who should talk are not saying anything? They are just keeping quiet. Come on now. Jesus said, the one who dipped his hand with me in this pot is the one who is not innocent. When you have dipped your hand with somebody, will you bite the finger that is feeding you? Hallelujah. It's sad, but I must tell you this. It's sad. I did a little study, and I'm glad he said it about the concept. Please, I'm not criticizing any pastor or anything. Please don't send me any text messages telling me jargons. Hallelujah. But the guy who ordained the bishops, his name is El Pok. And he was the one who ordained Idahosa, ordained, and you know, many of the men of God we know today. Are you listening to me? And that guy was living in a lot of, as at the time, he was living in a lot of sexual perversion. This is the reason why most of the bishops and the great men of God, they find themselves lost and materialism are two things they cannot explain. See, that's why the Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man so that you will not be partakers of their sins. You just hear one great bishop just got up. Ah, he's gay. Now you try, you, and you are now thinking. I always pray to God and say, Lord, as I stand to minister to your people, let me not transfer a faulty spirit. Once you see a whole congregation of people manifesting certain widespread characteristics, the leaders are not to be spared. I, I tell you the truth. The leaders are not to be spared. Hallelujah. I told you about my encounter and worry. When a lady came to knock my door by 1 p.m. Hallelujah. What she wore, it was too short. Where's my waist? This is it. See, this watch, this watch she wore. And then it had a it had a zip. Yes, she lifted it. I mean, she was proud. When I opened the door, ah! She said, sorry, I'm looking for the 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 uh, receptionist in this place. I didn't know what to say. I said, are you not seeing my room number? I'm a guest here. In the night, quietly. Who know? Said I should come and help her go and walk a guy from her room. Come on now. When I jammed that door and I locked it, I will leave Zari and come to worry, kill my destiny and come back. See, when these things happen, that is when you will know whether you love God or not. That's why the Bible says for you to prepare. He said if your strength fails you in the day of battle, your strength is small. If you turn aside in the day of battle, there are too many people who are pretending like they are living the reality of God's word. Back to that story about that his son. And he saw the increase. After he gave him the car keys, he said, hold on. 
Apostle John Suleiman and his wife called him and he said, please talk to us. I'm seeing increase in my own ministry, but not like this. This does not carry the signature of God. What are you doing? The guy said, well, you know, the blessings of God and some of the, princip the principles that uh, daddy like you have taught us. He said, no. He told him, go out. He called his wife. He said, madam, you know that I see. Talk to me. And she began to tell him, there is a popular herbalist in this country. I won't mention names of things. He said he took the woman there and they told him that they should bring a six-year-old child together with a customized mic, just like my own here, that nobody else will hold. Listen to me. And when that sacrifice was made, they said anywhere around Lagos, if your ears can hear that mic, whether your leg likes it or not, it will enter that church and sit down there. So ministry is expanding. And many sons just come, Papa, receiving demons and spirits. And now he got a seed of a jeep and he gave him. John Suleiman said, he said, even those who backslided did not go to the devil. They just fell short of God's grace. Is it that bad that you went? He said, from today, I delete your number from my phone. I have nothing to do with you again. Do you know how many men of God go for meetings and they go with ridiculous PAs that nobody can explain? Let me see one pretty lady. Annie, come. So I'm going, I'm going to wear now, Mina. And I just drop. I tell them, please, book two rooms or one large room. Anyone can serve. Two or one large room. And then I say, she's my PA. Hallelujah. And when you see the seriousness in my life, you won't even believe. Think I'm seeing every lady like trees. This is an example, oh. Media. It's an example. Hallelujah. And then what happens? In the name of PA and useless, stupid, satanic manifestations of lack of self-control, what happens? So they have different people in different spots. Just sleep with her sharp, sharp, and then they just clap for the man. Comes to sit down and he stands up. And you see people falling under the anointing. He's genuinely anointed, but he has lost the presence. See, Samson woke up from sleeping with a prostitute. Did you read that in your Bible? What did he do? Immediately, the Bible didn't say he prayed to God. Immediately he got up, removed the gate of a city. Because they said they wanted to enter and kill him. So he said, let me remove the gate for you. He removed the gate and kept it on a mountain. That you are compromising on kingdom things and God is merciful. is not an endorsement. Are you listening to me? This is what a lot of people don't know. May God deliver us from a life of falsehood and bring us into a point where we truly practice the word of God. There are many men of God who stand on stage and say, I don't owe God one night and God says, you owe me three years. Three years, you're a liar. You are shouting, I don't owe God anyone. It's not true. It's not true. They don't believe in giving. They don't give. They just have the way of getting money. They can cook up any ridiculous project that nobody can account for. And you know, the way men of God run ministry, especially, I'm telling you, especially those who are not transparent, they run it in such a way that nobody can question them. These are prophetic instructions. These are this and that. So you, sister, please, after Koinonia, let me see you in my room. It's a prophetic instruction. What nonsense is that? Who is deceiving who? Then when she comes, you say, you say, don't you smile, Abba. <laughs> Is that not what some of your lecturers do? They look very serious. Come to my office. When you come, they say, ah, ah, relax. Who is beating you? <laughs> Those are indications of perversion. Pack your load and run away. No matter what it will cost you. Doers of the word. Doers. Whether anybody is watching you or not. You are packaging your tithe and saying, Lord, you know I honor you and I believe this. 
whether you are alone or you are true, you see a challenge in your life that is questionable. You don't sit down and just say, wow, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. You seek for help quick, quick. I've had the opportunity to pray for a lot of ministers and I do that with all humility. When I see certain people come and say, look, I'm a man of God, but I'm struggling with this and that. I tell him, I say, look, we are all products of God's grace. But for your openness and sincerity, the Lord will bless you. But there are all kinds of people who will sit down and believe they are the Alpha and the Omega. Everything about God is in them. Are you listening to me, please? So what aspect of the word have you not made up your mind to live by and practice? I will not be surprised if there are still ladies in this place that get up to go and spend weekend in one guy's house. You are here, you are looking at me. Say, Tor, won't I go? He's the only one now. The Christian brothers are not coming. Which nonsense are you saying? Who do you want now to come and meet this kind of unfertile soil? Who do you want to come with this kind of life? The brother who is praying and sweating in your presence and praying for his destiny. Look at what you are living. I'll not be surprised if there are some of you who still tell your parents lies and inflate figures of school fees and the rest. Now you laugh because we have a church that massages things you should address. You just say, forget that lie. Don't make the people feel guilty. What nonsense is that? You don't find that in Koinonia. By the grace of God, we will attack whatever needs to be attacked in love until we present a bride that is worthy of God's power and glory and grace. Hallelujah. There are many of you that once situation becomes a bit uncomfortable, just a bit you can shake like a leaf and compromise at anything that comes. You are not a doer of the word. Tonight the Lord is asking you, are you ready to come back to a point where you truly begin to practice the word? Whether you are supervised or not, I always tell people the true proof of obedience is when you are given the opportunity to disobey. Hallelujah. If, come Tosin. If Tosin is my daughter and she's staying under my roof, you know the kind of person I am. You know there are some things I won't tolerate. I cannot say Tosin is a nice lady because I'm there. Are you listening to me? The day I leave her alone, and she has the opportunity to do anything she wants to do. But she says, I have come to take the word of my father as my own word. I'm not doing it because of him. At that point, they are the practitioners of God's word. God bless you. There are some of you, the only thing that is keeping you right now is because we are watching you. Hallelujah. One day someone came and said, pray for me. I want to go abroad. I said, why? He said, truly, I just know that God wants me to be there. I wanted to pray for the person and the Lord told me don't waste your time. This is not my desire. This person is just going to go and die. Abroad? Some of you want to go abroad. <laughs> the first day you go abroad and stand and you see ladies almost nude moving and you find out that nobody is even concerned. Ah! You just say, are you, are you serious? And I'm so happy my father's phone has spoiled. When you are not supervised, are you going to stand for truth? Do you know that there are some people that get back into things like drinking simply because maybe there are a group of friends are there. They say, don't fall our hands, I beg. And the guy will sit down and say, ah, just turn around and saw pretty lady. Say, oh, God, let me just do it. This is one last time. I'll ask for forgiveness later on. Are you ready to stand and live by the word? Can you be different? When people are bribing and doing other things, say, just give me my own. I won't be against you, but I won't talk. Because the way I'm seeing some of us, God is keeping you right now. It's just God that is tying your leg. You are like foxes. If they set fire and leave you, you can't do anything. That's why God has refused to expose some people into certain levels of blessings. You think he's a devil. It's because you are not ready. 
Hallelujah. There are many of us, the day you hold one million of your own, not that your father gave you that you should keep it for him, your, your own, that nobody knows, only you. Ha! You can book the best room in TJ Palace. You can charter a car from here and anywhere. You can take a flight, just drop in Lagos and go back. You can do anything you want to do. At that point, you'll find out three days, four days, you've not prayed. You say, God, no problem, we'll talk. Because there's no pressure again. It's time to begin to ask yourself, are you pretending over your passion for God or do you genuinely mean it? Are you just coming for koinonia because you feel kind? Let me come. I don't want anybody asking me any question. Did you come or not? Let me just kukuma come. I love the Lord on stage, anywhere. I love him with all my heart. And I'm committed to living by the truths of God's word that I know nothing else. I don't care what level of honor comes. And I want that to be your resolve tonight. Let me show you another scripture. Thank you, Jesus. John 13. John 13. You do mighty things, you do glorious things, you're a faithful God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things, you do glorious things, you're a faithful God, awesome is your name. John 13 verse 17. John 13, verse 17. Let's read it together if you're there. One, to read. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. So it's not enough to know. Jesus is encouraging them. He said, if you know these things, you will be happy when you do them. If you know the principles that can bring a blessed life, happy are you. There are some of you, you have your remaining exams now. You trusted God last year. It came out a way you don't like. You said, God, now I'm wiser. I won't get punished like a child again. Now I'm a man. I pray for a generation of men and women who are uncompromising. There are many of you, nobody can vouch for you. Hallelujah. There are some of you here, nobody can vouch for you. You can't beat your chest and say, Kai, I know the, the Bible says, God said, I know Abraham that he will teach his children, in the, he, will, he will raise his children in the way of the Lord. Let me ask you a question, all of you here. Who can speak for you if you are not there and say, I truly know that this person is a Christian? Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There are many of you that nobody can speak for you. When they just ask and say, this guy, say, ah, in this life, you don't talk for people. Once you see people talking like that, they, they are already answering the question. Hallelujah. They say, sorry, want to appoint this person one post and what do you, they, ah, no, just leave that position vacant there, please. Don't give God headache. We have enough challenges in this church. See? Many of us are not dependable. You don't, your, 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 re, your resolve on God's word cannot be verified. You love God, but we are not yet sure if a guy starts meandering around you, whether you stand. It's amazing what people do in the presence of certain opportunities. Amazing. Hallelujah. I know a lady one time, some years ago, she wanted her school fees desperately. Then we used to meet at um, chapel. And the girl started attending ENI meetings actively. Apparently, she heard that it's time for payment of school fees. Every time this lady would greet me, immediately after the program, ah, 
I said, Lord, thank you. You are doing great things in life in this place. As soon as this girl got this school fees, I didn't see her again. Till I'm serious. About a, a year later, when it was about the same time, she just sent a text. She said, it's been a while. I miss you. I miss you. I said, me. Abba. Judas kissed Jesus, took him to hell. Nobody will kiss me and take me to church. That's how many of us are with God. You just thank God. Hallelujah. I'm sharing this testimony. God is doing great things in my family. And at that point, especially our parents, you see that there is a sense of your father who has not done devotion in 12 years. We say, everybody wake up. Wake up, family. We are going to give God glory this morning. You just know that one areas that has been pending has suddenly come. Later on, you wake him and he says, the day you enter this room again, and you are now asking, so who is deceiving who? That's how many of us are. When you came in the session, you were very excited. Hallelujah. Very excited. You had one pointing fingers at people and saying, these guys are not praying. What's wrong? Pray for them. Now you are the one they are praying for. Why? Every time. They see you strolling around Paladin. They say, one guy told me on Facebook he loves me. See, the things people do. That's why it's good. Hear me, brothers and sisters. That's why it's good to let God examine your heart. Don't set an exam for yourself and mark yourself. Give yourself a organized speech and price for yourself and say, I'm growing. Hold on. Let God be the one to work on you. But there must be a result. There are many of us today, the way we are pursuing God, if we don't get what we want from God, it's, it's possible you will just wave and say, God, I walked with you for five years. Everybody has seen now that I've, I've tried. Bless my father, you didn't bless him. Bless my mother, you didn't bless him. Bless everybody. Leave me alone. Just bless them. You didn't even bless them. Why will I stay? You see how backslide. Look at who is going to suffer. The throne is made of gold. Everything is made of gold. You are the one suffering here. And people who live these kinds of lives get angry at those who are paying the price to live by the word of God. Because the moment you see that there is a sister who is standing and saying by the grace of God, I'm going to stand. I will wait for the will of God. I'm developing myself in virtue and character. Say, just say all of us are bad now. Who, did they talk to you? Our presence is judging what you are doing. Please don't uh, pray. Let's just know that us, we are sinners. What is all that? Or you just see a guy reading plenty books. He's read seven books in a week. You have been sleeping and snoring. You just wake up. Your saliva is almost, it has poured on the bed. It's almost floating now down. I just clean your face. And you hear yourself talking foolishly and he's talking like a leader. And then he say, hey, must you say it? Abba, who is not growing too? You will always hate those who are doing what you are not doing. Always. You look at broke people. The day they bless your father, neighbors that used to laugh suddenly just get angry. They just gather themselves and say, ah, ah, hey, hey rain is falling, no. Mouths that cannot drink gari is now taking butter. You see, all kinds of insinuative statements. Whatever you are not doing, when you see someone doing it, it will judge you. You go around smokers and those who drink. Once they see you going to church, they just say, ah, ah, Mother Mary, talk, pray for us. So they look like they are bold something is judging them you calm them down and talk to them and they will tell you they say i don't like my life but brothers and sisters let me tell you something those who will receive rewards in this journey are those who are living so ask yourself are you frustrating yourself for nothing or you are truly practicing the word because it's going to be terrible if after 10 years of standing one leg in one leg out you find out that those who are truly committed are now walking in the blessings and you are still standing hallelujah 
Have you seen those who they are inviting for a dinner, for instance? And someone who just had from somewhere, you dress too, you come and stand like them. You say, you, what do you like? Yeah, I like, uh, I like cold uh, uh, juice. You are not invited. You are there talking. You can talk like them. Once it's time for the invitation, they say, brother, so, so, this way. And you start becoming uncomfortable. And you're just standing there and say, ah, so how are you? Are you sure your name was there? How did you know you were there? Because you had been standing for long, but you are not part of it. Now, you didn't do other things. And by standing there, you were implicating yourself. Because you've already just said with someone, even say, we'll sit together. When we get there, car, you're a very nice person. You talk smart. And then they say, last but not the least, sister, this. And you are just standing there and say, what is all this? Huh? I've been standing here for long. It's not where you invited. Did you show signs of concern? That's how many people who name the name of... Do you know that's how many of our parents got into trouble? Ask them. They'll tell you we did evangelism. Uh-huh. We did evangelism. See, I, I was even president of, of my fellowship. That's not the issue. Did you practice the word of God that you were taught? They say, so, so great man. He was my friend. I was even praying with him. That's the deceit. You were praying, but did you believe it? Did you walk in the truth? Others were tithing. You were there pretending and telling lies. Now, when the cloud is full of rain for those people, what happens? Those who are not tithing, it doesn't come. And you are now telling people, bring bucket, oh, rain will come. They brought buckets and drums of water. You are waiting. Say, just hold on. It, it comes gradually. It has been, you have been waiting for 20 years. It won't come because you didn't do anything. I refuse to, after committing myself to God, and then at the end, I will find out that I was only pretending and there is nothing to show forth for it. Two more scriptures and we'll pray quickly. Hebrews 4. Verse 1. I will show you from this scripture. Tonight's teaching is an admonition. Let us therefore fear lest a promise be left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it too. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. He said, but the word that was preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Look up. So they had it. But what happened? It did not produce results. See, listen, let me tell you something. That's why you can have a crowd of people like this. And we are praying and releasing blessings. And you see some people lifting their hands. But they don't even believe. They are just wondering, will it really happen? How are we even sure this man of God is genuinely anointed? You are there arguing. Somebody is opening up his spirit. Next week, the person comes with a testimony and says, why is it that there are some specific people? I will find out this thing. Next Sunday, I'll come early and go and stand and see what media people are doing. That's the cynical spirit that people have as a result of not seeing results in their lives. The Bible says they had the word. The word of faith, the word of healing, the word of restoration, the word of prosperity, the word of godliness, the word of success, the word of increase. They had it. They jumped like everybody. They shook hands with everybody. They danced with everybody. But they did not practice it. Can I tell you something? One of the things I have found out in scripture is that beyond a man of God, beyond an anointing that you sit under, you are principally responsible for working out your salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible says, work out your salvation. Work it out. When the word is released, you receive it. There are some of you that have been here with terminal diseases. It's been for a while. And you're just laughing and saying, well, well, this and that. For some of you, probably part of the reason why you are not even receiving is you don't even believe. See, let me advise you. Don't come here if you don't believe I'm a man of God. You are wasting your time. Did you know that it's possible for people to do that? You just come and sit down and watch and say, ah, ah. And this happens especially for elderly people. When they come and see us stand here, they say, ah, these are young people. And, and, and you watch them sitting in their predicament. Look, let me tell you something. 
when it comes to the things of the spirit drop your age your title your reputation your educational status whatever and with meekness you receive that's the problem with a lot of people some of you have been calling some of your parents who have serious sicknesses to come they say ah it's just youth hallelujah remember going going to one house to go and pray for them they've heard about me they've listened to the messages and when i went there i saw the shock on the man's face apparently he thought he was his age mate coming when i came in he couldn't believe it ah. so he sat down and then for him to talk he was just merry-go-rounding he was wondering because some of his children are older than me you know he was talking hey how have i degraded myself now and i sat down there and with all humility i was pitying the man i said who is suffering i was sitting peacefully at home you didn't let my phone rest now i have come this guy was suffering something he didn't want to say it. it was a medical condition it was me and him he could not speak these are things i have had for years it's amazing how some people come to look and they just look and they say this and that a man is suffering from a particular he just sits down and you just who are you deceiving every time william branham wanted to minister to people he would look at them and say do you take me do you receive me as a prophet of god people would say yes instantly the vistas of their life will be opened up to him and he'll begin to speak to them one day a particular man of god called me he saw in a dream that i was ministering to him and he called he had been struggling with certain things to real challenges in his life and when he called he said well god showed me this thing eh, and i wanted us to rob mines together i told him keep your pride i'm not going to pick a call and rob mine you need you need deliverance and this is what god has sent for you to be done if you are ready come don't sit down there and say we're not robbing mines many of you will never admit see it, this is not bragging this is not bragging this could probably be the reason why some of you are not receiving any blessings you see the protocol people start and say abba sonny abba you are looking at me okay sonny we entered car together with you you don't know difference my parents suffered for years i was still anointed and liberating many families for years it grieved my spirit did you know that in all my years of ministry i've only ministered in my state aside from crusades we organized i've only ministered once in my own state there are few places in this country i've not gone to but in my own state only once you see that this can be reasons why people don't receive from the day see this is not human worship by the grace of god we respect is childishness if an elderly person someone older than you can give birth to is respecting your grace and you are now bragging you are a child there is not demonic possession the, the remedy is just to grow up but let me tell you something you must open up your heart and receive praise the lord are you receiving something this could be probably part of the reason why some of you are not blessed every time you're receiving the word you're just looking and say oh yeah yeah again and you are remaining where you are the anointing reacts to honor brother when god has put a man over your life he's not your friend he's not your colleague It is in an attempt to express this point that certain men of God raise themselves. But the Bible says, do not exalt yourself more highly than you ought to be. There are people I will never joke with. I can be smiling with them. But the moment I want to beckon in the capacity of their anointing and call, I bring myself to my proper position. This is what some of you have been missing. Hallelujah. Sometimes we give spiritual instructions here to help you read a particular book. Pray throughout this week. Go and you just laugh. See, your adherence 
to instructions. He says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from out of thy heart, thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said, they are life to those who find and help to their flesh. This is the reason why some of you are not receiving results. You're not participating in the things that can build you because you don't believe. But tonight, I pray that God will give us the heart to be doers of the word. Not just hear us deceiving ourselves. Because in the end, you are the one who will suffer it alone. I believe the word of God. I believe in you. I believe in your word and the power of its truth. I believe in you. So I lay down my cause that the cross might be found in you. I believe in you. I believe in your word and the power of its truth. I believe in you. So I lay down my cause that the cross might be found in you. I believe this word. We're going to pray in the next five minutes. Listen, and I don't know how you're going to cry unto God. But you're going to tell him, Lord, I'm making up my mind. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hear the prayer point first. I'm making up my mind to be a doer of the word. You're going to honestly repent and say, Lord, I've not been tightened. I'm not faithful. See, when, when you are honest before God and you say, Lord, you are not, a you are not an unjust God, truly, have not been obedient to your principles. You don't pray. You don't speak the word. We talk about speaking the word. Many of you just feel this is for children. Look at what your life is. Look at what your life is. Anything comes and goes. Hallelujah. But tonight we are going to pray. We are going to say, Lord, I'm not ready to tell lies again. I, I leave this aspect of the word, but I'm not serious. In this aspect some of us is in the aspect of character you can pray you can fast but character you've never sat down to work on it it's not an issue hallelujah some of us is love some of us is the spirit of excellence we keep saying these things you're not going to hear anything new these are the principles that have made great people but let me tell you something listen there must be a resolve in your heart. God supplies the grace, but you are the one who will make the resolve. The Bible says the prodigal son came to himself. No preacher preached to him. The prodigal son did what? Came to himself. Some of us may need to come to ourselves today and attack some things out of your life. Pornography, immorality, hallelujah, falsehood, every kind of thing that is not consistent with Christ. You're going to make up your mind and say, Lord, I'm going to live by your word. This is what your principle says. And no matter what it will cost me, I lay down pride. I lay, listen, see, look up. It's not difficult. Just resolve that you are going to be a genuine Christian. Is that too much for you? Is it too much for you to say, I'm going to mean business with God? Every principle that I am taught with childlike faith, I'm going to walk. See, listen. I remember one time I was teaching someone how to drive. This guy was learning. Before I finish saying something, he would say, I know, I know. I'll say, okay, drive it and I'll turn. And you just do blunders. I know, I know. If you find yourself in that attitude, you are on your way to doom. 
There are some of us, that's what has caused you into trouble. I know, I know everything. I know, pray, I know, I know this, I know that. Shut up and sit down and learn. When I see people say things about me and I see certain people, great leaders in the body of Christ that I respect and I admire, and I see the dimensions they are operating in, I feel like a child and a toddler. And I maintain that posture of humility, accepting that there are so many things I need to learn and know. And I humble myself and take it. There are many of us, the last time you made progress in your life was years ago because everything you know. You are sinking. They are saying, give me your hand. You say, I know. Are you joking? I can swim. You are dying. Bring your hand for help. I know. That's how many people are. That's how many of our parents are. God has raised some of you as saviors, but every time you want to speak to them, I know they are dying. I know. This is not an issue of medication. They've spent millions on the treatment. Get to a place where you will be free. I know. Don't worry. We have things under control. Run away from that demonic attitude. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. I hope someone received something tonight. This message is preparing us for the miracle service. In the next five minutes, listen. In the next five minutes, I like us to, if you want to lie down, you want to cry instrumentalist, I want you to really play. We are going to cry unto God in the next five minutes and say, Lord, I've not been practicing the word in this aspect and this aspect. There's no demon stopping my progress. I'm the one. I must admit it. And you're going to pray. Lift your voice. Please don't look at anybody inside and outside. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, cry unto him. Say, Lord, I know many of the principles that would have brought me prosperity that would have brought me grace, that would have brought me increase. I've not made up my mind to pay the price and live by these principles. Lift your voice and pray. Don't deceive yourself again. The Bible says, be ye to us. Be ye to us. There are issues in your life You've been afraid of confronting. What you don't confront, you don't conquer. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I've not been praying for weeks. I've not been praying for months. I look like I'm a prayer warrior, but I've been deceiving myself. I've not given up wrong associations. I want to, but I've not given them up. Lift your voice and pray. I will not deceive myself. I vow to be a practitioner of kingdom principles. No matter what it will cost you. No matter what it will cost you. Rakata baka sataya, mambra teka reko sapa, rabaka preske perie da balaba, rapa prosko preske pati alaba. We are praying inside and outside just five minutes. Hallelujah. Listen, you know what rebellion is? Rebellion is the willful, perpetual and continuous state of working in non-compliance with the principles of God. Although you know, let me tell you something, if you don't do something about it, one day your life will be written Ichabod. The glory will rise gradually, for you will arise like Samson. The strength of many men have disappeared because they lack the stature to stay and continue in the spirit. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. Lift your voice and say, 
We are rounding up. Make sure you are praying. Help me. Help me. Help me. I want to practice every truth that I know. That's the only evidence that you believe it. Challenge yourself tonight. Make a commitment tonight. Make a commitment tonight. Say I will practice every truth I know. Whatever truth I hear, I believe it. I receive it. I walk in the truth. Don't feel condemned. Don't feel condemned. You may be convicted, but don't feel condemned. God is always a faithful God. And he's willing to help you. One more minute, we're rounding up. Rakata kosoto pakata. Lepros ke pariketa. Pranto pres ke lebo shataya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one quick prayer point. You're going to pray and say, Lord, grant me grace to live and walk in the truth of God's word no matter how hard it is that I walk in it until it becomes a habit until it becomes a habit whether it's tithing whether it's speaking the word whether it's your study of God's word studying books that will develop you you know these principles get the tapes get the teachings share them again practice them Lift your voice and cry for grace. Lord, release grace upon us. Grace, unwavering committer to walk by your principles. No matter what happens, you are faithful. You are not a man that you should lie. Not the son of man that you should repent. We can take you by your word. You are trustworthy. You are reliable. We need not trust any other thing. Hallelujah. Look up. Look up. See, many of you need to go back home and go and talk to some of your loved ones. All those, all those renewal covenants and those devilish things you go and do that they bring whatever prophet to your house. You know that those things are wrong. You must not walk in rebellion. It's time for you to demonstrate the sincerity of your committer. The things you used to do. You can't do it again and say you are the same. Don't just say I'm the righteousness of God. No! Let me tell you something. Listen to me. Listen to me. Even if Satan accesses a life, access was given to him. You will be ready to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. This message, as simple as it is this night, I pray that it will ring in your spirit. I pray that you will not just be emotional about it. Take action. Some of you will need to call some friends and tell them you've been nice, but I'm really sorry. We cannot continue again. We are not going the same place. What if they say I'm bad? That's the problem. You can't find yourself everywhere doing everything. And say you are going somewhere. No. No. Great people don't behave like that. You've got to be different. It may cost you your reputation. It may cost you misunderstanding. You focus. With time when your light shines, everyone will see it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There's any sister here. That you are around any guy who is sleeping around. And doing every, whether he's a pastor, pope, bishop, lead him this night. Send him a text message and tell him, Pastor, I respect the grace of God upon your life, but I'm really sorry. I'm ready to be serious with God. Or brother or whatever. Make up your mind to live by the word of God. Make up your mind. This is in preparation for the mighty things God is going to be doing on Friday. You must be ready to do it, to be a doer. Many of us, God stopped giving us instructions a long time ago because if he tells you, you don't even do it. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands. Father, as a family, we pray 
we want to be authentic Christians. We want to be genuine. And Lord, we are asking you to help us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that genuine, honest committal for God, his ways for obedience, practicing principles that cut across every sphere of our lives, our spiritual lives, our finances, the anointing, excellence, whatever principle, help us remove a heart of stone, oh God, and give us a heart of flesh tonight. Let the spirits of men stop struggling with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And whoever is under the sound of my voice, who has become a prey to Satan, as a result of negligence, I set you free tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I silence the voice of the accuser over your life. I declare and I say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood speaks mercy which is higher than judgment. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that God will destroy any appetite for disobedience to his word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I separate you from godless associations. I pray for grace that as you go back home, what needs to be destroyed will be destroyed. What needs to be deleted will be deleted. In the name of Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that named the name of Christ depart. Psalm 66 verse 18. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. There is something that can make a man's prayer to not reach heaven. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart. So when we begin to pray tonight, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, in this miracle service, this addiction is over. I have to end it. Are we together? I burn all my MBs. I buy my phone and I spend all my MB watching nonsense. Naked photos, all kinds of things. No, it's a spirit. See, anything you cannot control is a spirit, including food. Don't think I'm just talking. I'm, I'm going to come. Everybody has a slice in this pie. There must be something that relates to you. I don't have a problem with women. Food. You can't fast. Because of food, many of us would rather remain in the same spiritual level forever. Let me tell you, gluttony is as bad as fornication. I hear what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. You can talk about true power that puts situations and circumstances in command and your entire life. Do you know there are people that eat whether or not they are hungry once they see it. The same way a man sees a woman and cannot resist her. You see food and you look, ah, whose own is this? You put one bones, you add another one. You are eating before, until it finishes. There's no rest. It's an urge. You need help. You need help. Are we together? And all kinds of variations of addictions. Those who sleep with little children alone, put a naked adult woman, they will pass as if they didn't see her. Children. Men and men. Women and women. My name is Joshua Selman. Let me tell you, if you don't deal with these things, you will never go far. You will rise up as usual. But ask Samson. I will arise as before. And all of a sudden his glory. God. Am I condemning you? No. Will I be quiet about it? No. Because you must receive something tonight. So that you will not be healed and delivered. And the demons even mock you. Before prayer they just jump out and wait for you. That's what happens to a lot of people. Is it not in your Bible? I'm going to share with you on that. When a spirit leaves a man, what does it do? It leaves him forever. The Bible says Satan departed from Jesus for a season. Came back again when there was another pressure. And Jesus started negotiating. Mass, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup. Can we negotiate another way? But he overcame. 
He said, nevertheless, not my will. Hallelujah. Please, I want us to be sincere with ourselves tonight as we cry before God. I know what I've said is very uncomfortable to many of us. But this is the key. When you pray, you clear out that way. Satan does not like what I'm preaching. It takes a lot of courage to preach what I'm telling you. But that's the key. Are we together? But I think I'm okay. No, opportunity has not yet been created. So instead of sitting down to say, I hope my roommate is hearing. Uh -uh. There's no roommate. There's no, I hope my husband is hearing. God, I, God, apostle, God bless you. This stupid man, thank God he came for koinonia. I'm talking to you. There is no pointing fingers. You see, that spirit that exempts you from the word of God. Uh, that sense of self-righteousness that makes you feel, I am okay. Talk to a Jimmy or talk to Kenny or promise is the same spirit that destroys people. I'd like you to lift up your voice in one minute. Koinonia, cry before the God of heaven and say, Lord, it must be broken. Addictions must be broken. I don't care what you read in the internet about them. Sotoba. That alcoholism must be broken. I can't keep destroying my body. Pornography. Masturbation. I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour. I need thee. Come, let's be now, my Savior. I come to thee. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Come, let's be now, my Savior. I come. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus and righteousness. Pray. I've come to call that spirit a liar. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Listen. Look at me. Some of you can do anything for money. If you must sleep with an animal for money, you would do it. For as long as there is money tied to it, you throw away your Christianity. If it's money, no problem. As long as you will give me money. Someone sent me a text. Uh, was it yesterday or day before yesterday? I was in the middle of a very serious, intense prayer time. And then his text came. And he said they wanted to give him a job. But they said he should give like advance. Like pay some money. So that they can process it. And I told him, I said, don't you do that. You cannot mix. You can't. If you are paid for it. Where then is the place of God? Please don't say I'm not a Nigerian. I'm not a stupid person. I know what I'm saying. Whatever God cannot do in my life, oh, let no money do it. He said, lest you will say I made Abraham rich. Who told you God is not able? You see, all these carnal things we keep doing, we edge God out. When it comes to real issues, we act as if God is not alive. Oh, if God cannot do it, let it not be done. No. I want you to pray. And say, Lord, whatever I do not have discipline for, break it out of my life. Pray. Pray. Shabakataya. The secret for fire in a ministry. The secret for fire in a family. Is the secret for fire in a life. It's a painful reality. But it's a key that will take you high. 
Habarata Gabaruto Sopra Nigala Bora Susia Bahata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point on that. Listen. For many people, I have found out that we are not interested in paying the price to create the atmosphere. Everybody say atmosphere. Are we together? You are a brother, anybody, any sister can hop into your house any day, any time, anyhow. Are we together? Lie down on your bed loosely and carelessly. You don't care. 2 a.m. in the night, still in your house. What are you doing? We're in a relationship. Nonsense. You are not the first to get married. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You must create discipline. If you are friends with a roommate... And the roommate is bringing boys all the time to your room. Negotiate. And brother can say, if that agreement, if you cannot reach a consensus like that, find a way of getting out of that place. Someone cannot be sleeping with a lady you are there watching. You will only watch for one month. I assure you. Atmospheres. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. There are things that can be discussed on phone. Discuss it on phone. When we were staying together, as Jimmy will tell you, when we were staying together, as years ago, there was an unwritten rule. Let me tell you, these are some of the rules that helped us. God is my witness. My younger sister is here. My younger sister has never slept in my house till today. My blood younger sister. Only two people have stayed in my house. One, a Jimmy, and one, my younger brother, the, the day he came. Am I stupid? No. Am I a fool? No. It's called atmosphere. It's the price for atmosphere. Someone comes to your room with visitors and says, please, there's a little birthday party. It looks like you are busy today. Can you give us the room? You thought they just celebrated birthday and drank beer and smoked and left. They left spirits. They left influences. Yes, I know what I'm saying. You get into that room, I assure you, it will take the grace of God for you to connect again. How about all kinds of empty movies? A lot of us believers have all kinds of compartments on our phone. There is compartment A, gospel. Gospel means anything that reminds you of heaven. And then there is the B part. When you want to socialize, look, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Choose you when? Otherwise, I don't care whether they dip you in one gallon of oil. I assure you, you will fall down, you will stand up. Satan will be waiting for you there. You will have dreams that will press nonsense out of you. Shout Jesus, shout Abraham, shout any name you know, nothing will happen. That's what makes us powerless. He told Gideon, said, why have we not seen the miracles of our fathers? He said, take away the idols. My room cannot be a place for somebody to keep beer. Don't take it, but let me use your fridge to make it cold. What are you doing? It's exactly the same thing. Please pray in one minute and say, Lord, the price and the honor.
unashamedness to create an atmosphere. An atmosphere. Lift your voice. Pray. The price. My, my room. My house. My office. Cannot be a place for rubbish. When they want to bribe. It's not in my office. The meeting will not be held in my office. When they want to fake a miracle, it will not be on my pulpit. Pray, pastors. Don't let any Tom, Dick and Harry just arise and hold the mic on your pulpit and do all kinds of jamborees. I paid the price to create the atmosphere to host the presence of God. Pray, Koinonia. It's part of the meeting. This is already someone's deliverance. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, only, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Faithful, 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 faithful. Faithful, faithful, Do this and you will see the power of God in your life in a way that you'll be surprised. Imagine that you are sleeping and all that is playing is a powerful prophecy. Let me tell you what will happen. You will continue listening to it in your dreams. I guarantee you. And that one is powerful because your body that limits the spirit is sleeping. Ah, you will access anointings. You will wake up under a strong presence. I know what I'm saying. Number two, let's hurry up. The second challenge or the second key, I think the rain is settled, so as many, if it's not an interruption, please um, arrange them outside. If they can still squeeze in, that's all right. Number two, let's hurry up, please. The reality of demon spirits and the character of their operation, write it down, is something you cannot ignore and prevail in this life. The reality of demon spirits alongside the character of their operation. The Bible again and again cautions us and says that we should not be ignorant of his devices. Satan has a way he operates. There is a way, there is a system that Satan operates. Anybody who ignores the reality of demon spirits alongside an, an insight into the character of their operations will pay the price severely. Let's look at two scriptures very quickly. Luke chapter 4 please verse 14 and 18. Media help us. Luke 4 14 and 18. The Bible says Jesus took the scroll. Right? He, the messianic prophecy. And um, go to verse 15 please. Next verse. 15. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all 16. You are reading down to 18. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Right? What did he read? Then it was given to him. It was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written. The messianic prophecy. 18. 
the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor to bind up the broken hearted to preach what? deliverance to the captives there are people under captivity the reality of demon spirits in our world and the fact that they influence people Christians and unbelievers alike should not be ignored are demons real? the bible says so is Satan real? the bible says so do they oppress people? yes Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you power, authority. The word there is exousia. Behold, I give you power. Luke 10 19. To tread upon serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. So there is the enemy and the enemy has a measure of power. Are we together? And he says, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Look at me, please. Look at me. Koinonia, look at me. Every time Jesus commissioned people, the first thing he told them to do was to cast out demons. Not heal the sick. Cast out demons. Right? When you read, um, let's look at a scripture, Mark. Mark 6. We'll read verse 7, then we'll run to 13 quickly. Mark 6, 7, 13. And he called unto him the 12. Read on please, it's projected. And did what? And began to send them forth two by two. He gave them power to do what? On clean spirits. On holy spirits. Spirits that are out of the influence of the Holy Spirit. They are called unclean spirits. They are everywhere like the air we breathe. They are responsible for the anger problem in people. Are we together? They are responsible for the barrenness in people. They are responsible for delay and retrogression. They are the ones who appear to you in dreams and sleep with you. They are the ones who appear and cause miscarriages. They are called unclean spirits. Now, regardless of the theological stratification, they are still spirits. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But against what? principalities, uh -huh, powers, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. They are all called unclean spirits. And there are three ways that their, their ministry or their life found expression in the earth. Number one is covenants. It's the most powerful way demon spirit advance their cause. Covenants. Number two is ignorance. Ignorance of the precepts and the principles of God. The light shines in darkness. So when there is no light, darkness remains. Are we together? And then number three, disobedience. 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 Demon spirits are real. A Christian cannot be possessed, but he sure can be influenced. Absolutely. Galatians 5, when you read from verse 16, this I say then, walk ye in the spirit and the Bible. He was talking to the Galatian church, people who had already encountered Christ. Are we together? But this is what he says. This I say then, that you walk in the spirit so that you will not gratify what? the desires of the flesh. Then he says the flesh lost it after the spirit. The spirit after the flesh two of them are consistently contending. What does that tell you? That you're a Christian does not mean that these demon spirits will not attempt to influence, manipulate or wage control over your life. There's nothing embarrassing when a Christian is delivered. The operation looks like possession but it's not possession. And now this is the balance. I'm going to create a balance. Because there are all kinds of prophetic ministries because they do not have a sound word base. Right? And let me tell you something. Even the prophetic and the supernatural is limited by the recipient's understanding of the operation of the word. Are we together? I can be a genuine prophet of God but because I do not have a sound understanding of scripture, I can look at this beautiful lady looking at me and see a spirit behind her and based on my interpretation of that vision, I call her a witch. 
Are we together? And then I fabricate a strategy. And I say, Oga, the solution to dealing with this, your wife, seeing that she's a witch, is to leave her. So, that is my, that is my advice based on my limitation. It may not be that I saw a wrong vision. But because my vision was not dealt with on the strength of the word of God for correct interpretation. It's not enough to see. Understandest what thou readest. He was looking. He was not understanding. Demons are real. They are here in this place tonight. Are we together? They came with many people. They came with many families. Many well-meaning people carried them. Our job is to separate you from them. That's what deliverance is. It's a separation. Let me tell you something. In the most authentic definition, deliverance is salvation. Right? The most authentic, in its purest form, deliverance is salvation. It's a complete translation. So every other thing you do is in support of that understanding. Demons are real. Let me tell you, you will be surprised to find out how many things have not been working in your life and can be credited to the ministry of these wicked spirits in our lives. There were many things in my life that didn't used to work for a long time. I tried, I did all I knew to do. But when I realized that, you see, let me tell you something. Because demon spirits have an advantage, hear me? Because demon spirits have an advantage of the realm of the spirit. When you try to fight in the flesh, you will be defeated forever. Every time, at all times, regardless of what you try to do. Someone promises to help you. You go to bed, a stranger appears again. The person gets up in the morning and tells you, I can't remember telling you what I said. Please get out of my office. Something made them do so. The same way there is an anointing that can call a destiny helper into your life. And you say, sorry, I don't need any help again. You say, God told me to do it. I don't like you, but I have to do it. Because something, may that thing, whatever thing it is, it must come upon you today. Yeah. Where men arise to make your life easy. Hallelujah. Demon spirits are real. Don't be embarrassed when you find out that these spirits are leaving you. Rejoice. And listen, please, don't just fall down and stand up and check yourself and feel embarrassed and then go back. No. And by the way, it has nothing, deliverance has nothing to do with falling down and manifesting. It has everything to do with the word of God prevailing over your person and casting out every nonsense that is roaming around your life. So you may be standing quietly. And they are flying out of you. Flying out of your destiny. The, when that, I'm teaching you this so that you will know what to expect and know how to appropriate it. So that when you leave this place, you now expect that that door that refused to open. Now that you know a spirit caused it, you expect it to open. So you start saying in the name of Jesus, I expect favor. I expect favor. A woman who has not been able to give birth, has not been able to take in. Husband is well, wife is well, both of you go to the hospital, they say there's nothing wrong as far as they know. Alright, take in madam. She cannot take in. Plants don't need consultation to take in. Animals don't need consultation. As haphazard as they are, the law still works. Because demons are not interested in the animals. They are interested in human beings. They are interested in your destiny. That's why they will refuse that you will not get that child. But the devil is a liar tonight. Yeah. What of all those, all those lumps and all those nonsense that grow around your body? Lumps in your breast, lump in your stomach, lump every part, movements around your body. What do you think is called? The Holy Spirit does not move in people in a foolish way. The Holy Spirit is, is, is he's an intelligent spirit. He does not oppress people. Do you know there are people here who cannot sleep? Young people, you, you, you watch them and they are still awake. Because the moment they close their eyes is a nightmare. Demons are real. The last key, number three. 
that the Lord will have us tonight to know. All of us must possess this if we really need result. It's your faith. Hmm. Your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith. Your faith. My faith reaches out to you. And I believe your word. Listen, let me tell you something about faith. Most of us, our understanding about faith is just for reception. But faith is also an instrument of defense. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Therefore holding forth the shield. Because there are times between prophecy and manifestation you will need to stand. Faith becomes the weapon you use to shield yourself. That when another word comes and says, Kai, can you imagine Pastor Alpha, is this thing really working? And then the shield of faith, you lift it. And he said, no way. I know that my Redeemer liveth is working. If it's working, show me the evidence. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He says, above all, taking the shield of what? Faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench, quench, quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Listen, faith is the result of an understanding. Faith is the result of an understanding. It produces persuasion it's from the Greek word pistis. Conviction based on an understanding. He says, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Just like I'm persuaded that someone's testimony will turn around. I mean, somebody's life will turn around tonight. I am persuaded. Listen. It's not just what you do that produces result, but the faith that backs what you do. The conviction that backs what you do. Faith is powerful. The Bible says by it, the elders obtained a good report. So if you need a good report, you will need that faith to obtain it tonight. And there are many of us who are trusting God for good reports. You want to change the doctor's report? You want to change every kind of nonsense report that the devil has brought. It will take faith. It will take faith. Conviction. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it everyone. Say in the name of Jesus. I believe in the power of God. I believe that nothing is impossible for God. And tonight. God. Through his spirit will birth my testimony. I believe that with all my heart. I came in, there were people in Abuja. My Bible uh, at the back of my Bible is full of all kinds of people's prayer requests. You cannot imagine people dropping their prayer requests. Apostle, please, as you are going back, can we drop our prayer requests all the way? Because there is a God that answers prayers. Please hear me, Koinonia. Tonight, like we prayed earlier on, I want you to get angry with the situation in your life. You see, I cannot make you tired of it. I can only encourage you. He said, woe to them who are this inside. The day you are tired, you will change. Let today be that day. Rise up on your feet, everyone. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Lord, my time has come. Are you praying, Koinonia? Lord, this health thing, I can't remain sick forever. No. This SS genotype, this HIV, this cancer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one more prayer point and then we'll begin to minister. 
I'd like you to say, Lord, grace to not doubt you tonight. Please lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I believe in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point in our lives. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, whatever must come upon my life for me to move forward. Hold on. Let it come. And whatever must leave me, I have no loyalty to you. I don't care where you came from. Tonight I part ways with you forever. Lift your voice and pray. Every anointing that must land upon my life today, every grace, every spirit, every dimension, tonight, you must come upon my life. And everything that must leave me, I'm tired of any luggage upon my destiny. Koinoni, are you praying? Those online, make sure you are praying. Right where you are, at your home, so wherever you are streaming from. Hallelujah. 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 One of the graces I'm trusting God to come upon our life is grace for accelerated advancement. Listen, listen. There are many of us, our pace of movement is slow. You can't look at your life and say, A, B, C has happened within this time. It's not a good testimony. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I must move. Oh, I must move. There must be advancement. The overflows. Make sure you are praying. God is sharing you where you are. Yes, oh God, I'm parting ways forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. You must contend with prophecy. Oh, this bad luck upon my life must leave. I was not cursed like that. Even if it's a curse, it must go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a war unto them who are this in Zion. There is enough function tonight to deliver the result you desire, except you are not interested. If you truly are interested and you are angry enough, Tonight is not the time to spectate and pinch and gist. Anybody does that kind of thing for you tonight, know that the spirit is using that person. You can't come here and waste your time. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for you. I'm about to speak. Please, I want you to pray. Mention every negative thing that you know has happened, patterns in your life that you know must change and say, God arise for me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it 
must go over my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. 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 Before God deals with our lives, we are going to be praying first and foremost that God will deal with our families. See, let me tell you something. It's not your fault that you came from that family. But it's your fault if you allow what came from there to destroy you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe what I'm saying, oh Koinonia. Believe what I'm saying. I love you too much to not lie to you. There are, there are ties and strongholds that are stopping people from rising. Lift your hands, everybody. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Now listen. Don't get too used to the fact that it's just about speaking and then people fall under the anointing and come be serious while prayers are going because it is at the word of God they respond. They are listening to me, I'm speaking. But until the command is given, there is nothing to confirm. I want to pray. Many of you will be very surprised. Open up your spirit. It's time for God to visit you and visit your families. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please. My God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit pointed arrows. Listen. Pointed arrows. Pointed arrows. And on those arrows, I see like papers placed on the arrows containing the names of people names of families names of territories that's what the Lord is showing me right now and we're going to pray listen the power of God is going to come very strongly upon people it's, it's not just you but your family are we together and once that happens know that the time has come you pray it and declare that deliverance Lift your hands. I want to pray now. Father, you brought us here to change lives, change testimonies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is giving me a very crazy instruction. Just lift your left hand. Be stupid. I've started my stupidity. Just follow me quietly. Just lift your left hand up to God and let me do the speaking. You don't have to say anything. Please, all those who I'm going to speak to now that the power of God comes on them, let's begin to have them outside. Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now. My God. I'm seeing so many people. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just responding to the spirit. Lord, you ask us to lift our left hands up. Whatever that means. There are people. I see fire right now. It's going to begin to come on people. Lord, the moment that comes on their family. Let there be massive deliverances. At the count of four. That will happen now. One. Two. Shakapatakata. Three. Four. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out right now. Inside, outside. I'm seeing the spirit of God. There's fire moving to families. Please, let's save time. At the word of the Lord, 
I place the word of the Lord upon that situation of witchcraft inside, outside. It's over, it's over, it's over. It's over. I come with a word of prophecy. I prophesy as I've been commanded. Miracles, deliverances for families. Enough is enough, oh God. Bring them. There are so many people outside. So many people outside. All the overflows. I see miracles. It's like fire. It's like fire. Hallelujah. Keep your hands down. I am seeing fire. And it's going to come upon the heads of people. And the Lord is saying it is still the deliverance. Lord, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Right now, all over the congregation. I prophesy it like fire. I see like an eruption. A volcanic eruption. Coming on the heads of people. The heads of people. Shake it, take it out. Where you are. The fire will meet you there. Where you are. Where you are. The enemy has done this. We command every havoc. We command every havoc. I tell you, I see deliverance for many families. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit. Causing the tragedies. In my family. Be exposed now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The light shines in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness. As you are praying. The power of God will come upon you. As you are praying. The power of God will come upon you. Be exposed. The spirits. Eating of finances. Eating of joy. Eating of peace. Oh, no. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I see written on this pulpit altars. And I want to pray. An altar is a platform erected by men that grants access to spiritual operations. Altars, 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 altars. At the count of seven, I tell you many people, this is not just families now. One, two, three, four, get ready. Five, six, seven, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Altars catch fire. Altars catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Shake it, take it, poro sotoba. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to call situations. The moment I call them, all those who are victims of it, the power of God will come upon them. Please, we are going to be fast. Right now I pray, the spirit of failure upon people. I'm seeing it. Lord, wherever they are, right now, at the count of three, let there be an exposition. One, two, three. Go, go, go. Failure. Failure, failure, causing failure in lives, failure in destinies, failure 
in ministries failure in business failure in academics every form of failure fire is coming on it right now fire is coming on it right now inside outside no you can't stand it is your deliverance is your word is your prophecy is your word that's why you came failure Lift your hands, everybody. I'm seeing chains. And the Lord is saying, let delay leave my people. That's what I'm hearing. Lord, where are those whose lives have been under one spot? Inside and outside. At the count of three, I like you to shout, Jesus, delay is leaving now. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Delay, delay, delay of all kinds, of all kinds. Harato Soto Peketesh. Delay. Delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. Be broken now. Now. Let her go in the name of Jesus. Let her go. I break that chain now. 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 That chain of delay. That chain of delay is broken over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God is breaking delay. Listen. Hallelujah. I've prayed this prayer in this place before. And the Lord is asking me to pray it again. That the destinies of men can be exchanged. So that you are walking. But you are not living your destiny. It's like you are living another person's life. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Please take this prayer seriously. It will do wonders in your life. Lift your hands. Inside and outside. And you watch what will happen now. Lord I pray. My God. I'm telling you, all I'm seeing in this place is fire. Any man here, any woman whose destiny has been exchanged so that the life you are living is not your blueprint right now. Let the exchange, let there be another exchange, another exchange, another exchange. The power of God is coming on people right now, right now, right now. Release your destiny. Release that mother's destiny now. Release that mother's destiny now. My goodness. It's your destiny. It's your destiny. You can't leave another person's script. Every witchcraft. Every manipulation. I curse it now. I curse it now. I curse it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to pray for people with strange movements in their body. I tell you, I feel fire. It's like people are literally bathing in fire. Strange movements. I want to pray. There are many ladies, many mothers under this category. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Every stranger, 
There is a lady, you feel a physical snake. Physical snake moving on your body. But right now in Jesus name, at the count of three, fire from the throne. Fire from the throne. I command those spirits roaming around the bodies of God's people. One, two, three, go, 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 go. Go now. Leave their bodies. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, sisters, lift your hands. I want to pray a very powerful prayer for our sisters. The devil will prefer to get one woman to ten men. Because a woman is a gate in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, no power will stand. Something is about to jump out of somebody's life. Ah, yeah, yeah. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Let her go right now. Your destiny must open up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Break every chain. Lift your hands, sisters. There are many ladies here under several oppressions. That's why many things are not working. But sisters, as surely as the Lord lives, at the count of three, I'd like you to shout Jesus. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Deliverance for you right now. Deliverance. Help them, my goodness. Please help them. Gates. 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 Be broken. Gates. Be broken. Kapataya. Gates. Be broken. Gates. Be broken. Gates. Be broken. I'm praying it again. Lift your hands. Ay, ay, ay. Every devil that came here with you must let you go. Lift your hands. There are sisters. There is already a programming on your destiny to fail. A programming to be barren. Who is this God that can look into time? Wherever they are, at the count of three, may the power of God fish them out. One, two, three. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. I open your destiny. Every lady, every sister, you are a gate. You are a gate in the realm of the spirit. Mighty deliverance. Mighty breakthrough, mighty breakthrough, mighty breakthrough is over, is over, is over by the power of the Holy Ghost. Over, over, over. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for the brothers. Lift your heads. Listen, let me tell you. There is a spirit that makes men not to be productive. Hear me. Is a, is, is a mighty deliverance that will happen to many men right now. Pay attention. 
there are men who are just going old there's nothing happening in their lives it's not your fault there are keys that have been withheld from you but that thief must be exposed lift your hands I want to pray Kabaratos. ancestry that's the first thing we are dealing with the brothers brothers lift your hands I want to pray many of you will be surprised to see what happens every spirit of ancestry every spirit of inheritance over any brother here stopping his advancement at the count of three some of you will be very surprised that fire will come on you are you ready now one two three take it take it take it that fire help them please help them my goodness brothers are coming under this unction it's time to move forward it's time to move forward help them I cast that spirit I cast that spirit I cast that spirit hallelujah God does this all the time and I don't know why God is doing this again. <laughs> ah. If he did it before he can do it again. Sing. Listen. I see something strange happening. Strange happening. Strange happening in the spirit. And I'm seeing the spirit of the Lord moving. And God is saying he's visiting Easternans. Easternans, evil people. That's what I'm seeing. There are altars that need to be broken. Please pay attention. I'm about to pray right now. Wherever they are, always he will do it. You are from the east, get set. Be sensitive. Come on, you shouldn't be doing that. Shaparato Kaparatia. Isanans. Lord, wherever they are, it will come like fire on you. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you now. The Spirit of God goes to the east. The Spirit of God goes to the east and is bringing deliverance. Deliverance. Strange deliverance. Evil people. Strange deliverance by the power of the Holy Ghost is visiting your soil, visiting your foundation, visiting your soil. If it did it before, it could do it again. Same God back then, same God right now. If it did it before. Abia, 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 Abia said, Shakata Barata, Abia, Abia, the Spirit of God is moving across Abia, miracles, breaking foundations. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God back then. Hallelujah. Many of you wonder why God does these things. There are signs and wonders. He steps into, you will see the testimonies that will come from this thing. Strange visitation. Lift your hands, everybody. Joshua Selman. God be pleased. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm walking in the spirit and I see a map. And the Lord is asking me to jump upon it. And I see Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. That's what I see. Right now, Lord, at your word, move. Southern Kaduna. Visiting men and women. That's what the spirit of God is saying. I speak it. I place the word of God upon it. Lord, go to that region right now, Southern Kaduna. 
South Kaduna, from Saminaka to Zonkua. Everywhere, move. Let the power of God touch people. Liberty for territories. Liberty for territories. No matter where you are, I'm telling you, Southern Kaduna, fire is falling. Fire is falling upon your soil. Upon your soil. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna, that's what I see. Southern Kaduna. Connected to Southern Kaduna, there is a miracle happening. Altars in Southern Kaduna, I come against you by this apostolic and prophetic mantle. Leave God's people now. of the spirit I found it working in my life is powerful God just calls a territory and everyone is like a digital spiritual system it's not something you just do by guesswork it's the spirit of God the spirit of God the spirit of God God is still touching Kaduna people I'm still hearing it in my spirit God is still touching Kaduna people there's no escape any family tied to any altar comes under fire. Any Kaduna family married to Kaduna living in Kaduna state. hallelujah please lift your hands while still pray I want to pray for students now something miraculous will happen here now I want to pray for students because I see conspiracy to short circuit people's performances I'm going to pray but there is a God in heaven with an all-seeing eye. And there is an unction he can release. I'm going to pray. Listen, let me tell you. You will be surprised to hear the testimonies that will come. The way God is working this night is very supernatural. If the power of God comes upon you, I want you to know that an angel is doing something over your result. Just hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Father, there are people whose results need to be worked upon divinely. And where are they? I see almost 45 people. Right now at the count of three. One. Results. Two. Three. Let the angels begin to move. As they move, it will affect you. As the power of God touches you, your result is being worked upon. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Inside and outside. Results, results. Carry over us. Receiving the mercy of God. Receiving the mercy of God. God upgrading CGPS. Upgrading CGPS. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. CGPS. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Supernaturally. By the creative power of prophecy. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
everything that has refused to let you smile hear me that joy and laughter will not come out of your mouth I stand tonight in the name of Jesus I bring that thing under fire I bring it under fire I bring it under fire shake ta 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 I bring it under fire Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands and be silent if you can. A miracle is happening. A miracle is happening. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing letters in the spirit. And these are employment letters. Hold on. Just keep your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. You will be surprised. Many of you for you and for your loved ones. The Lord is just asking. Just lift your hands. Father, at least 17 people inside outside there are up to five people online supernatural jobs may the angels of breakthrough take this word to the people right now right now right now right now receive it receive those letters in the spirit receive it in the spirit receive it in the spirit receive it in the spirit, in the spirit. for you for your loved ones I don't care what they read. I don't care what they have. We give them jobs by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I see at least four people. Three of them are ladies in the congregation. Your mothers are due for promotion. But they've done everything they know to do. As I'm speaking right now. An anointing will come upon you. To signify what he's doing to them. Lord go ahead. Locate them. Promotion. I force it. I force it now. I force that promotion. Take it. Carry it for your mothers. Whoever is sitting on their promotion. Whoever is sitting on their promotion. The judgment of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for the sick. But, um, There are two women I want to pray for here. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Now I know there are many people. Listen. There are two women particularly. One of them the anointing of please no standing for wife. No standing for anybody. If you are not the person um, sit down. If you are not married don't come here. Praise God. Please. The two women by themselves. I'm going to pray. That lady, oh, let me let me let me pray for her. that devil. Let her go. Don't disturb us. Don't waste our time. Out, out now. Out in the name of Jesus. I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus, you are living. Release her family. Release her destiny right now. The noise maker. Out you go and don't waste our time in Jesus' name. I set her free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now please listen. We are going to pray for those two women I don't know if there are here the two of them here, there's one of them um, I'm seeing one of them the anointing of the spirit is going to come upon her, I don't know who that person is but there's one, please do we have such people, we have to be fast if I mention your case once we give you one minute, there's no response, we have to move, so that God can help us, please except if they are outside there then that's alright a married woman that need the fruit of the womb. We have to pray for them right now. Praise the Lord. How many of us are trusting God for healing miracles in our bodies? Let me see your hands. I know many of our mothers are in this category. No matter what the case is. Who is it? Stand up. Come on down. The power of God will come upon that person. 
Please make sure they are married, though. Please stand up, stand up, madam. It's okay. Um, madam, madam, it's okay. Please. Madam, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. How many years have you been married? 20 years. 20 years. No child. Look at me. 20 years. Madam, look at me. Look at me. It's okay. 20 years of marriage. If if that woman gave birth to a child by now, that's the other person, right? Wariness. Why am I seeing her? I'm seeing chains around her stomach. You must remove it now. Remove it now. You are a devil of darkness. You hear my voice. Take off that chains now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's no such thing as barrenness. It's nonsense. When a spirit sits on your stomach, there's no way a child will come. If you like, do whatever. You go to India and come back. You only waste money. But there is a God. Madam, please look at me. I want to pray for you. Are you here with your husband? You and you decided to. Where is your husband? He's in Kafancha. We okay. reside in Kafancha. Okay, look at me, madam. Do you believe God can give you a child? I believe that's why I came. It's okay, it's okay, madam. Look at me. Look at me, madam. Place your hand on your stomach. I want to pray. How many of us believe this woman will come and stand and testify? If you are doubting this, you've not been in Koinonia. Madam, look at me. I want you to shout as loud as you can. I receive. Just shout it. I receive this God, ba. Let me tell you that is that is not working in your life does not mean it's not available. I've told you this thing. You have to believe there are dimensions in God. This woman you see will come and stand here with her child. Why is she here, madam? Why are you here? You are married for how many years? Give her the mic. How many years? Ten years. The anointing is on you. Lay your hands on your stomach. Look at me, madam. Shout, I receive, if you believe. I receive! There's something leaving your body now. Let it go. You are a devil. Let her go right now. Something is coming out of your stomach. That's what I'm seeing. That's what has stopped your barrenness. Go and have your child. In the name of Jesus. Go and have your child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let me pray. Madam, make sure you people return with your testimonies. You want to pray. Is your husband here? Husband, please come, sir. I want to pray for you. Marriage is between two people, not three people. I look in the spirit and I'm seeing three people. Somebody is a stranger in this equation. Please come, sir. I'm seeing a third person in the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. I'm seeing a third person in the realm of the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. The devil is a liar. We are going to pray. Please hold your hands together. Just in one of your hands. Yes, I want to pray. Please put your hand this one. Watch what happens to you. There is a name. Oh. There is a name. There is a name. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. There is a name. Let her go. Strangers, Kabataya. What God has joined together and prophesying. That's why I said, hold your hands. Anybody whose hand is not held physically should not be in this equation. Therefore, I prophesy. Any stranger 
release what you are put in her stomach now i'm seeing a snake that's what i see in the spirit i'm looking and i'm seeing a serpent in the name of jesus release her now release her now Kaparatakaya. marriage was done legally therefore you are an illegal occupant release her now let there be miracle children miracle children I'm seeing a lady in the crowd. You are standing in for your sister who has been married for five years. Who is that? I want to pray for that person. Five years. Your sister has been married five years. No child. No child. You are the one. Where is she? What's her name? Deborah. Where is she? She's in Kenya. How many years? Five years. No child. No child. My brother, six years. And you, the devil, wants to give you four years. Oh, cancel it. Destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Will you come and change my destiny? My destiny today. Come and change my destiny. My destiny today. Destiny changer. Don't just come out at will. What's it? Hold on, hold on. Coordinate yourself. Who is this? Hold on, hold on. Leave them, leave them. It's okay. Victor, leave her. It's okay. Calm down. How many years? Nine years. Huh? Nine years. Where is she? She's in other embouchi. Kikiamata. Is that the same way? Amen. Amen. Why are you here, my dear? She has been coming with scourges. For how many years? Yes. Three years. Mm. Her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? Did you hear what I said? I said her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? The man is the head of the family. See, this thing is being done by an anointing. It's not, it's not, it's not joke. It's an anointing. Look at me. Listen, every lady, place your hand on your womb. I want to pray for you. Just, just place your hand and leave it there. Hold on, not not for the brothers. Brothers, you don't have a womb. Just calm down. I know I'm praying for the sisters. That's why I'm praying. Because you see, listen, <laughs> just follow what I'm doing. You will be surprised to see what will happen. The Bible, the Bible does not allow you to test whether you are pregnant first before you marry. Is that true? So there is no way you know. You just marry and then find out it's a disaster. For a man, a family to pay the price, pay dowry, and get married, and then there's that nonsense. So lay your hands. I want to pray for you. Let's attack it in advance. If you care for the prayer, lay your hands. For some of you, God is saving you years of misery. I'm seeing a number 21, and this is at least 21 people and families involved. Father, visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. I'm praying a miracle is happening to your womb. Visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. Right now, everything that wants to plant barrenness in your stomach, for every lady here and those watching online, I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. Hold that baby. You, Ejimi, please give her that child. Just hold her so she doesn't fall. Just hold that baby. You are holding this child as a prophetic symbolism for your sister, for you when you get married, and for every other person 
and for two other people who are in the congregation. This prophecy is connecting them. Where are they, oh God? Where are they, oh God? The anointing of the Spirit will locate them now. Right now, two of them in the congregation for this miracle. For this miracle. For this miracle. Daddy, sir, please let me talk to you. Just give a few minutes. You and the madam close to you. Mommy, please come. You are an usher, but you are praying. Come. Let God answer your prayers. This lady is talking to the Lord. What was the issue? It's my sister. You are asking the Lord to do what? Bless her. She has put to bed feet time. But none of them is alive. Because I'm seeing a spirit. As soon as she's giving birth, this is like an antelope. It eats the children. As in, it's the child. Sometimes most of the children will grow. Nine months, you give birth. Then they will last for only a few minutes and they will die. Hold my hands. Where is she? Don't, don't cry. Don't cry. Where is she? What's her name? Laddie. Laddie. Laddie will speak to you. Lay your hand on your stomach. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare that this, this, this frustration is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is how I want to pray for you. Mama. Good evening, ma. Please, please stand up. Who is the stubborn child that you want God to touch? Lift his picture up. Victor. 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 This is your number one prayer. The one you want to marry. Where is the person? The one you want a job for that graduated. Job, job. The one that graduated. The graduates. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Henry. Henry. Mama, yes, sir. this is to tell you that God knows your situation. I hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. This boy needs to be prayed for. So ah. that this boy, so that they will not go and lock him in police station. Yeah? This, I don't know who the boy is, but... Let it stop on, sir. That's what I'm saying, madam. It's okay. You are here for God to visit you. Amen. Amen. Who is Nonso? Nonso. Nonso. I'm hearing the name Nonso. We are going to pray. Nonso. Mama. We are going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Eh? Very soon. Solomon, he want to marry. He's he planning for his wedding, sir. Okay, it's alright. We'll, we'll pray for him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I pray for you. You came here expecting the power of God to touch you. Exactly. Huh? Yes, sir. Mama, do you want the pain in your body to stop? Yes, sir. You wake yes, up in the Lord. morning and there's severe pain yes, in your Lord. back. Sir, you know about this thing. I know, sir. And the Lord is going to do a great miracle for Mama. Amen. Because Mama, I'm seeing you. You can't wash for long. Yes, sir. You bend down to wash, and your back is pain. Exactly. You. Thank you, Father. In the I name of that. Jesus Christ, the Lord who has seen you is going to do a miracle Amen. for you. I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Help, Mama, you, in Father. Jesus' name. Thank you. Please, don't, who is this? Eh? No, so, my friend, are you not so? Help the boy, his trouser is removing. Who is that? Who brought him out? Who should help him now? <laughs> Sir, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? I'm the proprietor of his school. Pastor, I'm a civil engineer by training. You own a school? Yes, sir. Primary school? Nursery and primary. Nursery and primary? Yes, sir. You've been afraid to start the secondary school? Seriously, sir. Is that true? I've been afraid. Because what is happening in the primary, up and down, up and down, people yes. are taking their children out of your school. And they're owing money. And they're owing money. And you are trusting God for a miracle. Because you too, you need a lot of money now. As you are standing here like this, you need money. 
very correct, sir. And this money is much. Don't collect loan. Don't collect loan. Loan is a way to die. Time is the limit. Don't collect loan. Sir, I want to pray for you. One of the things you are going to start seeing as you minister the word is breakthrough. You will start seeing strange breakthrough. Amen. In the lives of people. Amen. And then we want to pray for your school, sir. Things are going down. What you need is not money. What you need is very qualified teachers who are really willing to teach. Because the people there, they will come today, a few months, they want to leave. And when they, you know, they want, I will have to pray for you. The devil is a liar. Please lift your hands, sir. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the anointing for speed come upon you, sir. Supernatural speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Grace and speed for you. Mama, God bless you. Please, who is this? Please, if we have not called your case, just be patient. We are going to pray for the sick now. Why is Mama here? Mommy, please come. Huh? Your son's name is Nonso. What's your name? Nonso. From where? When I'm from state. You are a student here? No. Dark. Who is Shidi? I'm hearing the name Shidi. 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 Let me pray for the person now. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, what you need, this one is not, I'm not even getting any word for your son or so. What God is saying, I should prophesy to you, is that He's bringing restoration to your life. God is saying, I should tell you, you see that song that I sang at the beginning of the meeting? Yes, we are I'm speaking how, sir, it's finished. That's what God is saying, I should tell you, that He's going to bring restoration to your life, supernatural restoration right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hold my hands. I'm not getting any prophetic word for you. But in the name of Jesus, may God step in and do a miracle for you. Come, come and get in something. You need to pray. Huh? You need academic breakthrough. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Please, why are these people here? Huh? John. You are serving in prison. Have you started serving? Yes. In a place where? Yes. Yes. Father, give him favor. As you go, let there be favor in Jesus' name. Amen. You are what? John. John. Yes. From where? Zaria. I said, Sam, Father John. But since you have come out, let me pray for you. Yeah? Lay your hands on your chest. You love God? Yes. John. John, look at me. God can give you a new beginning. You hear what I'm saying? It's when I make altar call, John, run and join them. Huh? I'm going to pray for you, but that statement you made is not true. Oh God, help John in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you see, you have to be serious with God. Oh God, help John in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. She's older than she actually is. Huh? And there is a there is there is a medical condition. This is a feminine thing that I'm seeing that is responsible for this. Um can I help, sir? Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, Turen Shima, you, you understand English? I'm seeing happy birthday on top of you, and I'm seeing 50 years. How old are you? Shakaran Kina. Upon me on 66 1966 How old is that? This woman is 50 but she's looking like 70. The devil is a liar. Huh? I'm seeing something. It's not something I can say in the open. But you need to be healed. And this thing started happening to you since soon you were about 17 years about 17 years this thing started this is a serious woman issue this is women talk father we cancel this nonsense in the name of Jesus Christ 
it must live in Jesus name beginning from today experience the goodness of God in Jesus name may the Lord favor you too in Jesus name we want to pray for the sick now please this is our miracle service bear with us we have to deal with these things you see that there are so many there are so many situations we are praying everyone you can be seated if you can or stand we are soon going to be done but I want us to pray are we together Say after me, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus. Please say it like you're serious. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare, I declare that, every that every closed gate standing before my destiny, before my destiny under this corporate anointing, this corporate swing open now. Swing. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Please, we are not just whiling away time. Pray, participate in the prayer. Some of us, that's what, is, that's what is affecting our lives. Every gate. Every gate. Every gate. Every gate. Finances, over of my life. Be open now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I will still prophesy it upon your life. Say in the name of Jesus, I call forth by the power of prayer every helper who will give me access to resources, to opportunities, and to new levels. I call them into my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. This is a powerful prayer. It's a very powerful prayer. Hallelujah. 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 I'd like you to prophesy and say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. As I enter these ember months, I declare that the mystery of divine preservation is upon my life. No death, no accident, no bad news. Lift your voice and cancel bad news. Make sure you are praying. Some of you are just looking. Pray. It's a very serious prayer point. No bad news. I speak upon my life. The mystery of divine exemption. Rekete koto shoto koto bakata. In rekete kete 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 kete. Rekete kabakata bakata bakata. Rakata kata kata barada barada shoto. In rakato shata.
natural preservation. Out. Shabaka para toko soto pregedech. No arrow of witchcraft is permitted to fly over my life. Outside, outside, don't be tired. You're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Before we pray on the request, I'd like you to pray and say, In the name of Jesus, how about now? Let's be serious. In the name of Jesus, In the name of Jesus. September, September, October, October November, November, December. Hear my voice. I speak to you. Deliver to my life. Only blessings. No pain. No sorrow. No regrets. Go ahead and prophesy. Release power to your future. Release power to September. You shut your mouth. You shut your destiny. Release power to September. Release power to October. Release power to November. December. No plane crash. No post crash. No armed robbery. No terrorism. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus I declare A covering Over me And my family members Wherever they are The seal of the blood Exempts them from tragedy Listen I shared some months ago Hold on I shared some months ago a vision that the Lord showed me. I'm not one person who will stand and say, I saw this. Sometimes I see these things. I just pray. But it was upon my spirit and I said it. Remember, I spoke about the month of September. Everything you see us do here is prophetic. As you speak, it looks like you are joking. But you are releasing power to your future. He said, declares thou that he might be justified. Hast thou commanded thy morning? You don't sit down and it delivers everything to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say in the name of Jesus. The seal of the blood. 
is upon my life and my family members. Therefore, every spirit of death and loss and disaster must pass over my life and my family. Lift your voice and pray. No, not upon my life. Not upon my loved ones. They are sealed by the mystery of the blood. No accident. No accident. No death. No obituary. No plane crash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to turn your request to testimonies. Go ahead. All those online, follow us. We are praying. You submitted your requests and we are praying. Every request. Oh God, you have produced testimonies. Shaba katata. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. Let there be miracles, testimonies, breakthroughs. Turn around impossible situations, oh God. Let the barren come back to children. Let the poor return rich. Let the captive be set free. Let sinners come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Let your prayers be delivered. Let the sick be healed. Let jobless people return to jobs. Building projects completed. Spiritual lives be fired. Pray, pray. I'm going to prophesy upon this request and I want us to agree with a resounding amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare, I use this as a point of contact. Lord, there are so many requests here representing the challenges in people's lives. Some for jobs, some for marriages, some for children some for breakthroughs some for study um, scholarships others for help others for reconciliation others for souls others for financial prosperity and breakthrough others for restoration some for deliverance others for healing lord i pray in the name that is above all names we have a covenant of answered prayers with you therefore lord arise as a mighty man and turn every prayer request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for all those who have sent their requests on Facebook, on Twitter, on any other platform. Lord, in the name of Jesus, give them strange visitations. Strange visitations from tonight. Strange visitations. And Lord, for every request that made it to this altar, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray, answer everyone in the name of Jesus. Turn every request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I really apologize. Let me prophesy over our lives. Do you know why prophecy is very powerful? Most of the testimonies that you hear, listen, most of the testimonies that you hear are as a result of these prophetic words. Are we together? There are needs that God may not reveal and time may not permit to be able to extensively deal with. However, prophecy is powerful. It says in Numbers chapter 6 how that the priest will bless them and speak upon 
their life. There is something about a prophetic word coming upon your life. Those who know this, that is their edge in the spirit, have received it and it has produced dramatic results in their lives. Those who are careless about it like they are about many other things, never really get to receive anything. Let me tell you, even if it's an impartation, even if it's a dimension of breakthrough, for as long as you stepped your feet here, and for all the thousands following us online, connect, connect. Distance is no barrier in the spirit. It says you have turned my mourning into dancing. And you have turned my sorrow into joy. I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy like you have never experienced from January till now. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Joy like you have never experienced. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Hear me. I speak to your hands. Whoever is not doing anything here. Because God said be fruitful. I don't care whether it's a job, a business. I don't care whether you're a student, a graduate, a retiree. Whoever is having an idle hand. Between now and September miracle service. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. In the name of Jesus. Not something that will mock you. Something that will bring results. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I put pressure on your destiny helpers. I put pressure on them. May they respond to you. I put pressure on their spirits. May they arise and help you. May they arise and help you. Hallelujah. Any situation in your life that is a recurrent decimal, it comes as though the breakthrough is coming, then the situation repeats itself. I prophesy no more. No more. No more. No more. In the name of Jesus, no more. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen. Someone is speaking here like Mary and saying, how shall these things be? Lord, I, is it true that you will turn my life? I stand in the name of Jesus and I pray. A turn around that will surprise you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. A dramatic turn around. A dramatic turn around. Hallelujah. 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 In the last one month of my life, God has brought breakthroughs and things to my life that I have always believed God. But there is something God can do in your life that will make you fear Him. Not just believe Him. I prophesy to someone here. In the name that is above all names. That flight in the spirit that God can take a man and bring acceleration and not just surprise you but even make you fear. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone in business here and it's no diving. Things are not happening. You turn everywhere. You've done everything you know to do. You need the prophetic. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. Every dream that is still on paper. No finances. No grace to bring it out of paper. You have been writing things for donkey years. But the grace to put it at work, I declare between now and next next month miracle service, bring evidence, bring evidence, bring evidence, bring results, bring results in the name of Jesus. Anyone called jobless in this place, that you have done everything to do, including giving money to people, and they have not brought jobs to you. I don't know how God will do it. But this mountain mover that can shake 
every mountain. I pray, may he give you not just a job, a miracle job. Miracle job. Hallelujah. Every family here that is stuck in one place, you try to rise, something brings you down. You try to rise, something brings you down. Now I prophesy to you the grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Every embargo of bad luck upon your life. It works for others until it gets to your point and people change their mind. I declare in the name of Jesus in a way you have never seen favor and help. May you experience that throughout the month of September. Hallelujah. A dimension of anointing a dimension of wisdom that you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus receive wisdom in the name of Jesus receive wisdom in the name of Jesus and I pray for you everything that needs to be broken in your life habits and encumbrances that tie you down I command that today is their burial today is their burial today is their burial I want to prophesy for someone who has never stood here to testify in the name of Jesus whatever has stopped you from climbing this altar to testify I curse that spirit right now 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 Stretch your hands towards me. I want to speak to you. Everything that makes money run away from your hands. Money has a spirit. You have obeyed kingdom laws, but this thing is not just coming. You will try and labor and labor and nothing will come. These hands that are stretched towards me, as I stretch my hands back to you, by the mystery of divine supply, may you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold an amount you have never held in your life before. Hallelujah. Two more prayers and we are done. I pray for your spiritual life. Everything that is alive grows. If you are not growing spiritually, something is wrong. And the measure, there are two indices to measure your spiritual growth. Number one, your degree of conformity to the image of the Christ. Number two, your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom alongside their operation. How to make them produce consistently. I pray for you this month. As we round up this month into the next month. Keys that your hands have never held spiritually. Hold them right now in Jesus name. Keys, mysteries that you have not known or mysteries you have had and have not been able to handle may God give it to you in the name of Jesus hallelujah finally this is the prayer that I pray for people with all my heart he said you shall anoint listen you shall anoint Aaron and his sons right and then he said you shall take some of your honor and put upon him how do you take honor and put upon him honor the spiritual mystery that turns a man to a celebrity not by working it honor is when men have the capacity to discern and reward what you represent hallelujah i was coming from Abuja today and I stopped in Kaduna at a particular computer outfit just to buy to quickly buy a laptop and proceed and as soon as I stepped there I entered I saw all of them looking at me they started jumping as if it was a crusade Apostle Joshua Selman I was so embarrassed they ran went and called their father the owner of the place uh, they call it micro manor in, in, in Kaduna you know and they were jumping and they looked they said ah 
we, you have been blessed by your teachings, you know. God has lifted us. You can imagine the things that have happened. And they say, which laptop are you buying and all of that? And I looked at them. I had to just run away and go out. Because I didn't want a situation where they are doing business. They carry something that is so costly and give. Let me tell you, honor is more than money. Oh. Don't be deceived. Money is very finite. Honor is when men rise up to solve your problems for you. They rise up and make it their business to see you succeed. May somebody here receive that mantle. May somebody here receive that mantle. May a pastor here receive that mantle. May a businessman receive that mantle. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Hallelujah. When you are minding your business and some people are talking and say, how do we bless this lady? As if they owe you. They get up and plan governmental figures discussing how to lift you. And people say, what is the big deal? There is a big deal. It's a mantle. Please, I want to pray it finally. I know, I know that our time is gone. But I want you to receive this thing. There are people here carrying it bodily. When you carry it, it speaks. See, let me tell you, the true proof of sonship is a replication of grace. A replication of grace. A replication that you are carrying something you know, the devil knows, and heaven knows that this is like an address. It will cause good things to look for you. I want to pray for you. Honor makes your life easy. Otherwise, you will suffer for anything. Everything. You are in trouble, you pay for it alone. There is a mystery of honor. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. I pray for you, my God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your people in this great house. You have placed your mantle of honor upon this house and by grace upon my life. I'm praying right now. Everyone under the sound of my voice. Ay, 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 ay. In a dimension you have never seen. Or for those of you who have seen a measure of it in a higher dimension... Receive that mantle of honor. 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 Keep standing everybody. I want to make an altar call now. Please no moving around. Let's honor what God is doing. No sitting down. Just five minutes and we're done. Thank you so much for your patience. We stretched the time quite um, but I think that it's worth it. If you pay that much price and you come back with tearsome testimonies, it's a wise baguette. There are still people under the anointing. God is still doing things. And even after the service, God is still going to be touching people. But very quickly, I want to make a call. There are people outside all the overflows, any of them. And there are people following us online. You are saying, man of God, I heard you speak. And whilst you spoke, the Holy Spirit convicted my heart and told me it's time to make a commitment or a rededication. For some of you, this is your first time making a genuine decision for Jesus. Others, you have made that decision, but you are rededicating yourself. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front. Make sure that you do not leave this place without making that decision. God bless you. There are people coming. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. God bless you, young and old. Clear the way for them. Please, if you are coming from outside, I want you to save time. Double up, hurry up and come. God bless you. Alana Bakasuchi Ata. Alana Bakasuchi Ata. Keep coming. Alana Bakasuchi Ata. Keep coming quickly, please. hold on thank you so much for coming men and women people who love god listen no matter what has happened in your life no matter what you have done i don't want you to stand here feeling guilty rebels don't come to god 
they run away from God. So that you are here in his presence. Some of you are rededicating your life. Some of you are doing so for the first time. It doesn't matter what category. I want you to lift your right hand. Please, if you are still coming, join them very quickly. Lift your right hand and say after me very clearly. You are not reciting a poem. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. And I believe in you. That you died for me to prove your love for me. And now I give my heart to you to prove my love for you. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm above sin. I'm above Satan. I'm above the flesh. In the name of Jesus, from today, I declare that I have the life of God. I'm a child of God. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. And I am victorious in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted, please. Father, thank you for these ones. You have drawn them by your wisdom. Let today be the beginning of, of great days in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that everything they have laid at your altar will remain there and never cling to their lives again. Open them up to a new dimension of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I ask that you come into the lives of every one of these precious people. In the name of Jesus, use them for your glory. Give them tearful testimonies. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for making this decision. Now, I'd like you to follow this gentleman and the lady waving their hands. They will have your details in a minute and then you'll be back to your seat. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye